Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Dean. We're here again for yet another day. We're a midweek. It's a midweek program. Locked and Cross from 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton joins me yet again. Lachlan, Mr. Cross, nice to see you. How are you, sir? Nice to see you. Good to have you back. Good, How good. are you feeling? You all right? Uh, good, yeah. I went to the doctor. Uh, yeah, no I vid. I it yesterday. No vid. Um, good. I'm getting tested for, um, I'm getting tested for strep to make sure yeah. I don't have that. It's and, strep season, um, dude. Like August, September, it? strep season. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Anyway, um, I've been um, I've been fighting through it, and mm-hmm. um, yeah, I got a coffee here. Oh boy. If I'm if I'm feeling a little pernickety, I'm gonna have some crispers, barbecue chips. You brought good. I'm glad you brought food. There's nothing I like more than watching you eat throughout you a podcast. Eat, I usually try it to, when you when you ISO when you yeah. isolate the guests. That's usually when I go in and I try and grab a snack. Okay. I'll grab a little bite to eat. <laughs> well, that's different. That's finger food. Like the last two, three podcasts you've come on. One was Whoa. with the sandwich, like a hoagie the size of my dude, fucking head. And dude, I'm like, what I've is been, that? And you're like, it's a nice turkey on Havarti. Leave me alone. Well, listen, I've been you trying. Two jobs. I get it. I, I'm doing two jobs, but I've been coming. I'm rushing home and then I'm in sleeping. So I yeah. literally woke up like 10 minutes ago from a nap. And I don't know if you remember those those naps after your show when you did yeah. mornings Glorious. for a hundred years in Toronto yeah. that you wake up like it, it could be a 35 minute nap, a 45 minute hour, hour and 15 nap. And, yeah. and I don't generally nap, but I'm sick right now. So I'm trying to catch up on sleep. You feel like you've slept for six days. Like I'm walking out of that room. Like, Oh, Oh, the sick like, naps? Oh, yeah. yeah. You don't even fucking want to get out of bed either. It's one of those ones where it doesn't even matter if you're going to Disneyland that afternoon. You're like, I do not want to get out of bed. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, um, yeah. So that's what I've been doing lately. But I'm here. I'm here. And today, listen, Dean is about to do a very, very nice intro uh, for the guests that we have on. And yeah. I am going to, I'm going to let him do that. I'm going to shut up. But I would like to take credit for the idea of getting this guest on because I saw this tweet yesterday and I said, somebody, please, for the love of God, tell me this is real. I need this to be, I need this to be real in my life right now. And then I sent a note to Dean and I said, we need to get her on the podcast. And then you got up, scratched your balls, made a call and got her on. So I'm taking credit for at least the idea. Well, uh, you can't even do that. Like that that tweet that you sent was after we actually booked this young lady, Diane. Oh, I can't Terrian. take credit. She no, you can well yeah, team credit. We'll do team credit on it. Okay. Diane right. Terrian, mayor of Peterborough, Ontario, who has been trending for the past eh, I don't know, 18 hours. <laughs> so Diane is a weapon. If you don't know who this young lady is, she was one of the youngest mayors ever in the country. She's been the mayor of Peterborough for four years. She was asked to comment on the comeuppance of the Romana de Dulo attempted mass arrest of her entire police force <laughs> on the weekend. You may remember it. I don't know yeah. if you remember it. This it was what Diane put out. And, and I love the fact she did it. She did it on Twitter because she's like, listen, I, I don't have time for this shit. Here's a quick comment. And I think the country has been waiting for this for two fucking years. Here's the tweet. Diane Tarion, mayor of Peterborough. Her worship, her majesty, her excellency. And I quote, people have been asking me to comment on the events of the past weekend in Peterborough. I hate giving airtime spotlight to these imbeciles. Here's my comment. Fuck off, you fuckwads. I think I love her. I mean, I'm, well, I'm going to make this awkward. I well, think I'm, I love this woman. Well, you should. I think I do, too. Please welcome the mayor of Peterborough to the program, Miss Diane Terry. And ladies and gentlemen, there she is right in the middle. A rose between two thorns. Diane, how do you feel? You feeling all right? Oh, I'm feeling great. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm laughing uh, at the tweet and the whole situation is just like, it's just wild. Yeah. 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 Did you, you know? think like, so? first of all welcome to the show uh, i've been a fan of yours and your acerbic language for quite some time um 
I've, I've, I've watched you from a distance. I'm not far away. I, I live about an hour from Peterborough. And every time I go through that town, I'm like, oh, that's the mayor that gives a shit in that town, Peterborough. Yeah. Diane, it's Mayor Diane. She legitimately gives a shit. So, like... What made you what what happened with that tweet? And and we'll get into kind of the details. And before we do that, let's just welcome in a friend of mine. Uh, she was in Peterborough and she's the reason for the season. Miss Karima Saad, ladies and gentlemen, Hi. she joins us as well. Uh, we're all here. Now, Hi. That's right. We got two queens and we got a couple of idiots. It's the two queens and two idiots show. Nice <laughs> to see you. Um, explain the tweet. What happened? Why did you decide to put that out? Because everybody knows we can control our fingers. Right, Diane? That's right. Um, and so, yes, thank you for saying I'm, I'm the mayor that gives a shit, but I'm also the mayor who has zero fucks to give uh, for this kind of thing. So, <laughs> I mean, it's been, you know, two years ago. God, it's been longer than that since we've been dealing with this pandemic, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember at, back in 2020 when Bernier and Hillier were coming to Peterborough and I tweeted at them to stay the F home. Um, <laughs> And again, there were some people that were so offended by that. The same people yeah. that fly the fuck Trudeau flags. Yeah. Um, and and again, you know, like I I have a master's degree. I can talk to you in a scholarly fashion when I need to, mm -hmm. but this is not the this is not a group of scholars that we're dealing with. Uh, um, whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait, are you serious? And it's been oh my god, two, she's awesome. two years of this kind of of protests and Prima's done a fantastic job at, at, at covering that and coming up to Peterborough and dealing with the nonsense. Um, and these people come to Peterborough or Ottawa or, you know, where, wherever it may be with the explicit stated intent to cause disruption, to cause harm to people, to mm -hmm. disrupt our downtown, to arrest our police officers, um, to prevent people from, from living their normal, daily life it's wild so this level of these people exist in this like delusional world on exacerbated by this sense of entitlement mm -hmm. um because they're not used to being called out for their bullshit mm -hmm. um and frankly like yeah. not enough politicians call them out on their bullshit that we're mm -hmm. all like somehow afraid to drop an f-bomb um and uh anyways all this a long-winded way to say that uh, you know, I had a couple people ask me to comment about the situation. Um, as I said in my tweet, I hate giving these people airtime. Um, I believe you called them imbeciles, just so we can back that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've called people dimwits before on Twitter, yeah. and again, they get all mad about that. Mm -hmm. um, but they are. They, they're, they're, they're lunatics. Like, it's mm -hmm. lunacy mm -hmm. uh, that these people would come to Peterborough to try to arrest our police officers and then be upset that there's consequences for their actions. Um, it's fucking wild, you know? Um, it is, it's crazy. So that's where it's, the tweet it's came from. Anyways, that's a long way of saying where the tweet came from. I did not anticipate this level of uh, interest in it. Well, dude, you were you were like your front page news. Like I'm driving around last yeah. night, flipping through radio stations, and it's like, and 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 they play. You know when they play the breaking news sounder? It's like you expect something major to come. It's like breaking news: Peterborough mayor it insults entire group of idiots. <laughs> says something, and they were doing. They were going like this. They're like, she said, "Bleep off, you bleepwads!" And then the news people were like. Can you believe that? And I'm like, yes, I fucking can. Thank God someone finally fucking said it that matters. Locke, you wanted to ask a question. Go ahead. I, I, you know what? And listen, I think I know the answer to this, but I think it, it's worth a discussion. You are in the news a lot. Peterborough is in the news a lot because of the, the, the burger group the stay hard or whatever the hell group that is or no no it's a whole i want to be hard stay or something hard, yeah, and i'm no. not i don't know what the hell <laughs> peter burgers don't google that yeah yeah, yeah okay <laughs> diane or if you do it google it from someone else's computer oh, sorry lock i don't mean this this does this stuff embarrass you yeah i mean it's it, it's not only embarrassing because peterborough is, is such a fabulous community of progressive people, you know, again, I got elected when I was 32 years old, um, you know, as a young woman, like progressive people are in Peterborough, um, but we get dragged down by these 
these dimwits who are, yeah. you know, pushing these wild conspiracy theories and this like ideology that they're somehow oppressed when they're not. Um, so it's not only embarrassing, it's infuriating. Uh, because again, it does damage to the, the city, not just our reputation, but to our businesses, to families that want to come downtown but feel unsafe because they know that yeah. these people are going to be maybe blockading the streets or doing you know whatever insane behavior they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, you know, um, and I think everybody's, you know, at, at this point, you know, everybody has been tired of, we've all been tired of COVID for two years, you know? Yeah. Um, but at the same time, the vast majority of people are doing what they can to take care of each other, to take care of the community and to make sure that we're able to, um, return to some kind of normalcy in, in a safe way. Um, and then you have a small, it's such a small group of fringe people. And a lot of them aren't from Peterborough, right? Like they're coming into yeah. Peterborough from elsewhere with the intent to cause this disruption. Mm -hmm. Um, so that is yeah that i i'm fucking pissed about that yeah well and, and keep in mind i mean that was just like that was just one thing that happened right in, in your town as the mayor of that city you've been dealing with and you picked a great fucking four years to be mayor by the way two of them were probably normal <laughs> and the last two you got to take your like your book of how to be a mayor and you got to throw it out and go okay fuck what are we doing now like this is totally crazy um, don't worry but, i'm uh, writing a memoir so it's gonna be as fun. you should as you should because peterborough like is the alberta of ontario if you ask me well and that's and, that's, and, and again like and I love the county of Peterborough, but a lot of it is the county. Um, because again, the city, you know, elected, you know, Maria Monsef, you know, years ago um, as a young, as a young Muslim woman and elected me and elected Capo and Stephen Wright, like two first black councillors in, in Peterborough. Um, you know, so it, it is a progressive city. Uh, but then there's this element to it that somehow draws in this crazy, crazy fuckwads. Yeah, what well, fuck? I love that. But what is that element? Because it's like um, Peterborough's kind of gotten a bad name, and my folks have uh, lived in Peterborough for a very long period of time. They used to own the Moffat House. I'm sure you know where that is. Uh, uh, my dad used to run the radio station in town years and years and years ago. Uh, loved the community. Didn't want to leave. Had to leave for work. Uh, it, it, and Peterborough is like the gateway to cottage country. The Kawarthas, if you haven't been up there, it's such a beautiful spot. The architecture up there is incredible. Uh, the people up there are just incredibly kind. Very nice. Very easygoing. And it is a very progressive city. But everything we've seen about Peterborough has been misrepresented by these fuckwads. Yeah. Was that why you decided to say, fuck off, you fuckwads? Um, uh, was it like, it was just enough of the extremes misrepresenting this beautiful progressive city, which everybody loves. Like Kareem and I were talking about it the other day. Peterborough is a wonderful fucking city. And, and yeah, to the point where- Kareem actually you know, did say that. She's like, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice town. I mean, beautiful she, every town. time we've had her- on from Peterborough, she has said that, and we're not making that up, Diane. She she legitimately has gone yeah. out of her way to say it's it's no, I know. Really nice. Yeah, yeah. It is. Uh and and that's the thing. And then you have, you know, a, a small group of people that ruin it for everyone else. This is why we can't have nice things, you know. Mm -hmm. What's the reaction <laughs> been like uh since your tweet went out yesterday? And let's just put that up again, Karima. This is something you would never do, by the way. Something that uh I absolutely applaud, even though you would never do this because you're a much nicer person than probably uh Diane. No offense, Diane. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, <laughs> no, I, I love it. Karima just couldn't do this. Uh, people have been asked me to comment on the events of the past weekend in Peterborough. I hate giving airtime spotlight to these imbeciles. Here's my comment. Fuck off, you fuckwads. That has now become a massive international story. Mayor of Peterborough was trending this morning. Your name was trending this morning. When did you find out about this stuff? And, and how did you kind of... Did you consume it like we did? Because we had Karima there. She was doing her thing. We we're trying to get the message out to people that this just the insanity of this person, the self-proclaimed queen of the world, is going to arrest your entire police force. Take us through kind of the origin story of what you know and what happened. She's, Karima's shaking her head. She's like, I still can't it believe it. It sounds ridiculous. When you I say know. It. <laughs> it's lunacy, right? Yeah, um, it is. I mean, so I'm a member of the police services board. So, uh, you know, we had got updates um, last week about this you know, impending, you know, event that was going to happen on the weekend. Um, I was hanging out, my nephews were visiting and my sister who live in Toronto, they were up visiting. So I was hanging out with them. Um, and 
trying not to pay that much attention to it because again, I hate having to pay attention to this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, anyways, and then I got updates from a couple of inspectors and the and the and the chief of police, and you know said and thanked them for the work that they did and. Um, it just, you know, uh, you know, and Karima did such a good job at, at highlighting what was what was happening and, and providing that uh, accountability and that like, you know, footage of what was actually going on on the ground. And it was just wild. It's so wild. Like there's days where I'm like, is this real? Like, uh, I yeah. feel like we're, being in, like, we're, like we're in the worst timeline. Mm -hmm. um, anyways. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then I, you know, had people asking me to comment on it and my assistant, Deborah, who I think is watching and who uh, is the best, um, you know, she said, oh, people are asking you to comment. And I don't think that this tweet is what she had in mind. <laughs> and she said, I put out a comment. Um, but she also knows me well enough to, to know that this was the, like, the likely scenario. So, yeah. Um, it, were you told at any point, Diane, from, from people around you that, that, that care about your safety, uh, to not, to present your, to not be around it? W was that actually a concern? Um, I mean, because I've been like vocal over the last couple of years, like I was saying back to when I told Hillier and Bernier to fuck off, um, <laughs> they're, they, they're sort of like right wing nut job people have, you know, um, I've been on their radar. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I have cameras where I live, um, mm -hmm. because I <laughs> at one point was afraid for my safety and, and sometimes continue to be. And as a young woman in particular, um, yeah. there's a different sort of threat. There's violent sexual threats that I get. Um, you've been threatened by these guys. I, I mean, I, I'm assuming, I don't know directly who it is necessarily. A lot of it's anonymous trolling kind of stuff, yeah. but, but certainly like, absolutely. Like what kind of stuff you said, violent, sexual threats, threats to your life. Um, has that been, ha how long has that been happening? And, and, um, what do you do with that as the mayor? Do you, because, because listen, I've only gotten about we last count about 1300 death threats in the past, like two years. Um, yeah. and, and, and I know what they're all about now. I know these guys will never leave their basement. I yeah. know that most of these guys are not in this country. I know a lot of them are bots. I know that you have probably an intelligence system or you've got people around you as the mayor of a, of a decent sized city in this country that'll kind of explain to you what the threat level is depending on what you get. But what was it that, that you, you were getting and when did it start and is it still going on? So, I mean, again, it started back when I originally tweeted at, um, H Hillier and Bernier. Those guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, who I also hate giving airtime to, mm -hmm. um, but they have all lost. So like they suck. Yeah. Uh, we know that. Um, <laughs> but their followers, you know, were sort of out in spades after I like dared to tell them where to go. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of calmed down. And then I know that there's been a little bit, of course, after this last tweet, I'm, you know, I'm expecting, but I mean, this is a very common thing for women, um, women in politics, women in roles of leadership, um, you know, this isn't, it's not unique to me. Um, and I think that it happens to, to probably all women in, in these kinds of positions. Yeah. They're taking a, uh, an offensive opinion to the one that, that these people have, right. Which is like, um, whatever the opinion is, hateful, uh, theocratic, whatever the issue is that they, that they don't agree with, you know, 90% of society, science, healthcare, <laughs> Um, you know, legitimate news, peer reviewed stuff, like stuff like that. It's it, 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 which has always amazed me the hypocrisy in this group because they walk around and you pointed it out and I tweeted about it this morning. Uh, and Karima, it, it's not, it can't be lost on you. You go to these events and you see the way that these cats act, right? It's the fuck Trudeau flags, swearing at counter protesters, threatening people for getting in their way threatening yeah. Karima, pushing Karima, sending you threats. And when you put out a tweet that called them fuckwads, there's a guy named Tom Marazzo who's been going at it with me on Twitter today, who's really upset with you. He's one of the organizers. Oh, I blocked him so long ago. He's oh, so <laughs> I got him dead to rights. Don't worry. I got him. So she, he, he, he's, he's all about this morning, the language Peter Burroughs mayor used. And I wanted to remind him that a, he lives out of his car. So his opinion is fucking moot. 
But the other thing I wanted to remind him is that, you know, you're the guy that brought 8,000 people to the nation's capital that told the entire city to fuck off for a month yep. and walked around with fuck Trudeau flags and fuck Justin and nooses and all kinds of fucking threatening shit, Nazi flags and Confederate flags. Um, it, 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 it just it's beyond the hypocrisy to me is beyond the pale when the one thing that these guys care about this morning and creamy, you go to these things. The one thing these losers like just extremely cognitively delayed losers are focusing on this morning is the fact that you swore in a tweet, Diane. Well, and yeah, they don't like women generally and especially women that that have an opinion, you know, um, and that's how it manifests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do, do you problem. notice that, Karima? Like, you notice yeah. the hypocrisy of this group? Go ahead. The, the hypocrisy is just, you know, it, it, it's very blatant all the time. Um, you notice it in terms of how they treat counter protesters, for example, where if you are about freedom and freedom of expression and political freedom, yeah. you know, it, you must make space for dissenting views. And that doesn't happen. It, it's shutting down dissenting views. So fundamentally, they are authoritarian and regressive. Um, and that shines through whenever there's even the slightest amount of pushback. Um, and yet they feel entitled to sort of prance about and shit on everything. Um, so, and you know, if you fart in their direction, then it's, it's game over. Um, so it's, it's double standards, but it, it's, it's, how do you even keep pointing it out? Right. Because it's so yeah. obvious. Um, and, and they refuse to see it that way. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure what it is that doesn't click. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't. Well, I know what it is. It doesn't click is the elevator doesn't even go to the fucking middle floor. Sorry, Lachlan. Go ahead. I didn't even mean no, to interrupt you. You did not interrupt me at all. Um, I actually have a question. And this this is a sort of a common thread, Diane, through this podcast now for the last couple of years. Um, and, and it's it's about it's not just me. It's it's everybody has a real concern about where we're going and the leadership that that we have in this country um and uh i don't want to shift gears here too much but i think we can actually weave this into the conversation about what you're dealing with in peter bureau with this with this group of people are you at all concerned about politics where it's going who's getting involved it is because diane my tweet my quote tweet of your tweet was Someone please get a hold of this woman and tell her to run for the leadership of the country. Uh, and I know that's a little shallow of me to be making that decision based on one tweet, but it's so effing refreshing to see somebody step out and just be honest in your world. And it's, it, it's like, it's like fresh air. Diane. Instead of trying to play both sides, like instead of trying to not upset them yeah. because they, they might need like seven votes in the next election from the crazies, that kind what, of shit. I, you know, I sort of fell into politics. Like, I, you know, years ago, I never would have imagined myself to be involved in politics at all. Uh, you know, um, and part of the reason that I, you know, got elected uh, in 2014 as a counselor and then a mayor in 2018 is be because I engage with people and I like to think that like I'm authentic and I, you know, I, I don't pretend to be someone I'm not, and I'm not afraid to rock the boat. Um, and I think it's very telling that, uh, the three progressive women counselors in Peterborough. So myself included counselor Zippel, counselor Capo, none of us are running for reelection. Um, so the, yeah. the three progressive women are basically just like, fuck this. Mm. Like we tried, it's been a shit show. Uh, we have no support from our male colleagues for the most part. Um, and, uh, and that's a broader trend that we're seeing, uh, throughout, mm. throughout, throughout Canada, you know, um, is that young women want to be involved, but, they, but there's, it's such a, it's just, it's a lot, like it's an immense load to carry and you feel largely alone while you're doing it and you don't have support, um, and municipal is different, I think, than than party politics. Maybe like it, municipally in Ontario, we don't have parties, so I don't have a 
you know, I don't have a NDP women's caucus to, to talk to, or, um, mm -hmm. I have great supportive friends, but, um, you know, but, uh, you know, at the municipal level, you're just sort of, you're just sort of out there alone. Um, and, and then you get these, like, um, the Tom guy that you were talking about and some of these other like guys who just want to be out there and want to take control of things, even though they're like fascist, like assholes. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard. Like politics is hard and there's, you know, um, you know, um, people have been very, uh, have been super supportive of this tweet and saying like, thank you for being authentic. Thank you for caring about the community. And it's like, thank you for being an honest politician. And the fact that that is such a foreign concept is, yeah. is problematic. Right. Well, the fact that, that you telling the terrifying. truth about how you feel about common sense being refreshing to Lachlan, like that's refreshing. I, I know it's, I know. And oh, you're a breath of fresh air. And I'm like, yeah, cause politics is fucking stale, like in so many yeah. ways, uh, yeah. but it's going to stay that way. And I think like the big thing, this is a bit of a rant, but again, like, I've had some of the male, my male council counterparts, you know, say to me in private, oh, I really liked what you said and I, and I was going to support you. You know, I just wanted you to know that. I'm like, okay, but you didn't. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me this in private to make yourself feel better. You're not taking a public stance to support me because that might, I don't know if they think it's going to backfire or, or what. Um, but so the men really need to stand up and support their support each other and support women in these roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't, we don't. And it, it, it's a, it's a, it's generally a male problem, but it's traditionally a toxic white male problem. It is uh, we are, and, and I've been grossed out by it because I have some relationships in federal and provincial politics that I've had to walk away from over the past year, because I think a lot of those guys are so much more concerned about keeping whatever privilege they think they might be losing. And so they, they hedge their bets against everything by never doing the fucking right thing, which yeah. is giving away their privilege for the greater good. So other people can be at the front of the line and we can have proper representation and all the shit that you're talking about. Yeah. And it's and systemic. The most, supportive, the most supportive man on council has been counselor Stephen Wright, who is the first black man elected to the city of Peterborough council. Um, so he's been the one that's been super supportive of me, even though, mm -hmm. again, politically, we don't always agree 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but he's had my back. And that, again, that it's it's telling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you're not happened? running again? Like, what, you're what's not, going wrong? What's going on, Diane? Like, why? Dude, it's always what, been like this. Why it is, is never, why it things... has never been any different. It's yeah. never been any different. Like, it has always been like this. Unfortunately, with the whole advent of let's promote really smart, strong women into really key positions, it's been mostly mostly lip service, right? And we've always had a settler colonial perspective when it comes to politics, municipal, federal, provincial. And it, it has played out to a fucking T in the province of Ontario with Doug Ford, uh, mm -hmm. where he is literally been able to establish an oligarchy in this province it's a kleptocracy at this point he doesn't give a shit about anybody but himself it is all an old boys club and it happens absolutely everywhere and that's what you're talking about michelle right like Karima, you and i talk about this all the time we talk about this all the time how women are turned into these mm -hmm. props for men and they're like oh yeah give them a couple of months or give them a few years or give them a term um and we'll support some things. We won't support some things. But the things that they choose not to support are in the benefit for themselves, right? Like it's got it's got everything to do with their electability, what's in it for them, uh, private relationships, executive relationships they're trying to serve. Women are so much better than men at being accountable for the right thing. And they all get turned off by the process, right? Like we talk about this all the time, Karima, how difficult it is for women, especially women of color, to be able to affect change in these places because what happens is men just decide, well, you know what, let's go with the flow. Let's be part of the machine and let's allow people to, you know, think that people like Diane are, you know, legitimate politicians. This woman is one of the best politicians this country has and she's leaving politics. You're, yeah, you're walking away from it for those reasons. Are you not? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. And I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's so complicated. It's so complex. Um, and part of what I love about my job is being able to engage with young people and get them interested in municipal politics. 
mm -hmm. um, because we need them there. But then it's hard. <laughs> like we we're trying to find a, a progressive person to run for mayor in Peterborough since I'm not running again. And it's hard for me to try to sell the job to people when I'm walking away from it. Yeah. Say, oh yeah, it's been a nightmare for me, but trust me, you'll love it. You know, um, it's a, it's a hard sell. Nobody wants to do it. Yeah. Um, and so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's really difficult. And I think that, you know, having these conversations is really helpful and, um, you know, I'm going to do whatever I can when I'm out of office to try to mentor people that are interested in running for office, especially young people and people of color and indigenous people. Um, cause we need that. We need that so badly. Um, but yeah, right now it's like, um, you know, it's just, it, it's also like this term has been such a clusterfuck, like COVID hit that yeah. a lot of, you know, the EDC that we've been talking about with, you know, these, these lunatics, like it's, it's been exacerbated by COVID, right? Like the crazy has always been there. COVID's mm -hmm. just given people something to sort of mobilize around um, and, a, and a cause, even though they, yeah. I don't know what the cause is anymore because there's no mandates anymore. Even though they're like, no mandates. I'm like, what fucking mandates? Like you can do whatever you want. <laughs> like, yeah, it's crazy. Do whatever it is. You want. Like, yeah, I know, I know. I, I, um, I, I'm curious about what your, your plans are after you get out of office. Yeah. I mean, I have a few irons in the fire. Um, it's like <laughs> probably going to get into doing some consulting because uh, those of us in government know how much we pay consultants. Um. <laughs> Dude, okay. Can I stop you there just for a second? I was talking to a buddy of mine and I do a little consulting work on the side. If you, anybody has a consulting job, I want to let people in on the secret. It's friends of yours that want your advice and counsel that have disposable income that go yes. here. We're going to give you some money. It's a retainer. You said, and, and it literally is there. I've, I've had a consulting gig with a company for a year and a half. I've met with them three times. Literally, it is the best job you can get. And it is reserved for there you people go. that that walk out of high test positions or like, we need to understand how certain things work. Let's bring a uh, lovely Diane into the mix and she's going to help us because she's got her master. She's a very smart woman and uh, we really trust her judgment. Consulting is the way to go. You have yes. to get into consulting by the way. Yes. So sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Consulting. What are the other irons? What are you going to do? Uh, well, I'm going to do a bit like a bit of traveling, um, you know, get, get out of now that the pan the pandemic's over. Um, uh, you know, go, I'm going to go visit some friends in BC. My mom and my sister and I are going to Cuba. So I'm going to like take some time for me, Yeah, which is going to be good. Um, yeah. I mean, I like, this is the Anytime thing. Anytime politicians <laughs> travel, Diane, and everyone gets really angry. <laughs> well, so I'll just be careful. Do it when you're self. out of office. Yeah. Because <laughs> I won't have uh, the taxpayer dollar. Anymore. I got this. I got this email from somebody and it's this whole <laughs> song and it's, it's based on a Steve Miller song and it's all about Justin Trudeau traveling to Costa Rica and he wants me to produce it and play it on the show. And I'm like, you know what? I'll send it to the producers and we'll see what we can do there, Dave. But a question for you, are politicians not allowed to travel? Because why do we get so angry? And I don't like Justin either. But if he wants to go on a vacation for two weeks with his family, is he? Allowed? Isn't that just a normal fucking thing to do? Dave? Everybody, well, I know. I remember, like my first year in office, our local media gave me shit for um, going to a friend's cottage for a week in August, and uh, <laughs> and and this is the thing: people expect you to be on twenty four seven, but they don't want yeah. you to get paid. They. Mm -hmm complain about having to pay your salary i'm like y'all get a mayor and counselors for like a dollar each like it's a pretty good deal mm -hmm. um but i think it, yeah i mean and this is the kind of you know thing that we do need to talk about and sort of reconstruct the narrative and the discourse around what it means to be a politician so like i took a health a mental health leave back in february and i was very public about that um, and I had my acting, my deputy mayor step up as acting mayor while I took a couple of weeks off to take care of my mental health and well-being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And people, you know, some people. You're I'm a like, horrible person, Diane. That. I but can't believe you wanted to that. get your head straight on the taxpayer dime. I'm, like, I'm not helpful to the city if I am, if I am not doing well. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, I've had, you know, I've had friends reach out that have also now taken health leaves and they were like i was so afraid to do it thank you for speaking out about it and i'm like yeah and this is the thing you know 
maybe it's a generational thing because some of you know like some of the boomers don't don't like it but you know it's like yolo life is too short to be miserable um so like take the time you need to take care of yourself because again if you're not taking care of yourself how am i supposed to take care of my job take care of the city take care of all these other things i have to take care of if i'm not taking care of myself anyways I, that's, what, was that's there, my rant was well, there like a handbook that you didn't read when you got into politics about uh being yourself like i I yeah. don't know if I've ever the du- heard the pol- a politician. The pocket book of duplicity. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, did you just like, oh, miss that day or something? Or did you show up late before, before they were handing out that book? Like, like I don't understand I don't, I don't. what it is about politicians. And I don't understand why they haven't figured out that all we fucking want as a population is somebody that we can listen to, hear on radio, watch on TV that sounds like they're actually that they Normal. give a shit and they're actually speaking the way they think. And that even if I don't agree with you, Diane, I just want you to fucking tell it like it is. We we have such a void of that in the leadership as a whole in this country that it's, it's very concerning for me. Like, yeah. you know, yeah, no, I, I wish you were quitting, honestly. Uh, yeah. I mean, like that's, that's the thing, you know, some, um, some of, you know, counselors that I that I deal with, whether it's Peterborough or in my work in that I do as the chair of the Eastern Ontario Mayor's Caucus, but like there's some counselors who you can tell their main concern is getting reelected. Um, I'm a big believer that there should be term limits. I think two terms as a counselor, and then if you want to run for mayor, sure. But like people that have been on council for more than like 15 years, I'm like, why? Mm-hmm. Like, what? What? Um, and I and then they fall into this trap of just caring about re-election so Mm -hmm. they don't want to offend anybody they want to try to please everybody even though you're never going to please everybody like doesn't matter what you do piss people off as a politician the best you can hope for is that most people just don't pay attention to you and like forget about you that's like best case scenario as a politician is people are like apathetic um and anyways so um yeah it's it's really hard i think if there was term limits which again like municipalities cannot implement the province would need to do that, but the province doesn't want to do that because then they'd have to have term limits for themselves and the parties don't want to do that. Um, but I think that that would help with turnover. It would help with getting new fresh blood on council because you just have too many people, and, you know, and again, like I have a lot of colleagues that I know have been on council for a long time and I, and I respect the work that they've done. Um, but there's some that is just like, what, can you possibly offer after 20 years? Yeah. Can I ask you this like, can, can, can we, cause you speak freely, right? I just speak freely. Yeah, can I ask you a question? Them. Are you, are you just grossed out by the industry at this point? Because oh, uh, yeah. yeah, you, you have to be right. Like you, like yes. to, you have to be a failure in the real world out of ideas, just out of rehab or you have to be hoodwinked by a smarter person to get into any poor portion of politics, right? Like you, you literally, it is like a loser's game to be a politician. And so for you, no, I, and I mean that, like it's, I, well, I'm just telling yeah, the truth. Like, I don't want to do this job. Yeah. I'm the loser well, with me. <laughs> but, but like you're walking away from a job that's fairly well paying, comes with some cool perks. You're the fucking mayor of a pretty decent sized city nice in the gateway to... Yeah, you got you got a bike behind you, a nice feature wall with flowers on it. Like you're doing, but you got you got all the stuff, right? You, you probably have an expense account where you can go and take people for lunch to talk I'm about the city. I'm actually the only full time employee at the city of Peterborough that does not get benefits. What? Oh, <laughs> I like, don't get no an expense account. No benefits. No. Are you serious? No, you have no benefits. benefits. No prescription benefits. Like I have to pay for my own. Are you serious? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because is that is that in the job description or did they take that away from you because you called someone a fuckwad? <laughs> no, it's never been there. And again, because a lot of the time <laughs> there was um, mayors who were either like retired and so they had a pension and benefits or they were businessmen who were millionaires who didn't care about that. Yeah. Um, and so it's a it's a disincentive for young people. Counselors in Peterborough are, are ostensibly part time. I'm full time. The counselors are part time. It pays, you know, it pays enough. It pays around thirty grand, which is okay, but it's not, you know, enough to what, survive. What to be a counselor? Thirty grand? 
Yeah, in, oh, in the city of Yeah, and but there's no benefits. There's no um, it, there's no incentive for young people to want to do it. If you're a single mom, you're not gonna. You can't trade off the fact that you have to then pay for childcare every Monday evening from 4 p.m. till maybe eight when the meeting ends. Maybe the meeting goes until 2 a.m., which happens mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, mm -hmm. So it's a real disincentive to um, young people to to any diverse folks wanting to get involved in in politics mm, at yeah. the municipal level. It's different when you're provincial and federal. There's set salaries. There's there's you know um, there's different benefits and stuff. But councillors in Peterborough, um, yeah, they're they're not they're not paid enough for the and they again the amount of work you're expected to do because people think. Councillors are part or full time, but yeah. they're part time. So a lot of them have other jobs. Yeah. The ones that yeah. are retired. So what what uh, what events are you looking forward to not going to? Because <clears throat> I know John. I, seriously, because I know John Tory. I know a couple of other mayors. Uh, I've known John for a very very long time. We have a very different opinion on politics. However, he's always been good to me. Uh, I like him, and I asked him this question once because I went out to a poutine eating contest with him a couple of years ago. Right. And I, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like. Dude, you got to fucking like how many of these do you do a day? He goes like three or four and on weekends, sometimes six, like six yeah. events where you're going to, you know, the taste of this or the pride of that or the <laughs> the the confederation of this or ribbon the, cuttings, the opening, ribbon cuttings yeah. and the openings. And the, yeah, like all the dumb scissors. shit. Scissors. Like, can, can, can you shoot straight with us? Are you looking forward to leaving all that garbage behind where you're like, oh, fuck, I got to be well, somewhere downtown in like five minutes. It sucks. It's opening of a burrito is, bowl. The pandemic hit back yeah. in March of 2020, I was like, oh my God, I have weekends, even everything was canceled. I have weekends <laughs> myself, evenings <laughs> myself. I had all this time. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, I've realized that that is part of what I love about the job is going out and actually engaging with people, especially with, again, with young people, um, going to the business opening where you get to help because it so much to them. And that's the kind mm -hmm. of, like, you know, refill my cup and you know keep me um certainly there's some you know there's some times where it's like okay 8 a.m saturday at this thing and then i have to go to a gala at night it's a long fucking day um yeah but i am gonna, i am gonna miss that kind of stuff now well, you're a better person than me i wouldn't miss any of it but uh how did you meet karima how do you guys know each other because you you actually know each other pretty well like you're you're more than just like you know people who recognize each other you know each other right karima how do you know uh diane Diane came to my defense um, when I dressed up in a hazmat suit uh, outside <laughs> Peter Burgers and then got shoved into the road. And she was like, what the hell is this? Um, and then ever since then, um, in particular, the Peterborough gang, um, you know, believe that I have this deep relationship. The can't get hard group. <laughs> the get the stay hard group. Yeah, the yeah. Oh, stay hard. Sorry, I keep getting get it that up. wrong. Yeah. I keep getting. I, I like fold fast because they did yeah. fold pretty fast. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, so so they think that I have like some secret line to the mayor's office, which is you know not exactly the case. But mm -hmm. uh, you kind that's of how, do. We know each other through Twitter, so as much as it's a cesspool, um, I'm also yeah. really glad that it exists. Like I don't know that we've actually met like IRL. Like no, this is our first time. Been like, I just like admired you on Twitter and, you know, think that you're badass. And um, she is and badass. She is badass. I know that you're badass. I don't think that. I know that. Mm -hmm. um, and then yeah. you've been supportive of me online. And it's just like badass women just being badass. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. And we lift each other up, right? Like it's yeah. sort of that, that's that's how I like to see things. And, and I think that you know, that's something that's lacking as well in the world of politics, right? Where it's, you know, hoping that your adversary fails and, you know, we're not adversaries, but like just in general, people supporting people who want the world to be a better place. How hard is that? Yeah. Not hard. Right? It shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. Did you have you, no. did you eat at Peter Burgers ever, Diane? Did you ever eat at Peter Burgers? You ever have one of their tasty, tasty. Oh my gosh. Sandwiches? So I did once like years Ugh. ago. Before did you get I, worms? Before, it was not good. It was not delicious. <laughs> and this was like before I knew, like before COVID, this would have been before yeah. COVID, before I knew that they were like batshit crazy people. Yeah. Um, and it was just like, oh, this is like such a mediocre hamburger. How hard is the fuck up a hamburger? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, it's hard. God, I love you. 
Hey, and I have a I suggestion, just, Diane. I have a suggestion. You need to get Deborah to uh, to pin your fuckwad tweet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I I don't really think so. My assistant doesn't even like have access to my personal Twitter. She does all the official oh. mayor of Peterborough Twitters. Um, yeah. But buying Diane Tarion, like that's that's me. I'll pin it. Is this you? Like, is it, this is you. Still, it, it, it is the tweet of the century. Like, it's got 12,500 likes, 1,500 quote tweets, 1,997 retweets. That's viral. Awesome. Uh, that is the mayor, of it, it, which has caused, like, uh, an, an international uproar where all these people with fuck Trudeau flags are like, oh, she, I know. Said a, she said a swear. My friend said, just texted saying that I'm on the front page of Reddit. So that's a whole... <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other thing. <laughs> I know. What's Literally. the reaction been like from those stiff counselors you work with who only uh, yeah. do the gig because they need 30 grand extra a year? Yeah, you're 20 plus guys. Pals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of them guys. is named Larry, right? There's got to be a Larry. <laughs> on ca- is Larry there a Terry and a Larry? There's not, but it's close. Barry? <laughs> yeah. What was their reaction? Did any of your colleagues call you and go, I can't believe your mouth? Oh, this no. is unbelievable. They, again, because a lot of them are just, they're all in campaign mode. Yeah. Um, so they're just like, and I think some Stay of them are away. like on all day anyway. Um, mm-hmm. She's a real person. Stay away from her. I know. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, I mean, they didn't support me before, so why are they going to support me now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, can I bring up something that happened before um, Dean Blundell? I'll hit the um, go live button on Fantastic Podcast, and it's been Jim. Yeah. yeah. Can, I, can I mention something? Sure. Diane did a little bit of a fangirl. She had a little fangirl moment and said, oh, my God, this is like a, a teenage dream for me. I used to listen to you in high school, Dean. <laughs> Old balls here. Old balls. <laughs> is that true? Did you used to listen to me? Edge. That was yeah. like the go-to. I grew yeah. up in Mississauga. So, like, I, you know. Well, I, I did, too. So, right on. That's why you're cool. Okay. <laughs> and then all the people left Mississauga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was weird That's because when we got, off, yeah, we got. I listened to him in high school too. So this. Did you really? Like, did you? Yeah, I've never told you that. Yeah. No, you've never told me that once. Not once. <laughs> oh my god, all the time. Yeah, dude, we talk like, like five did. times a week, and that's the first time you're like, I used to listen to you in high school. We oh, talk like, like, you feel old, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's weird for me, right? Because, like, I'll get that from people from time to time where I've got a lot of admiration for somebody, and I'm like, hey, I'd love to have you on the show. And they come on the show, and before we get talking like we did today, you'll go, I used to listen to you in high school. You should... And so two things happen inside me. One, I die just a little bit. Yeah, just your a hair little gets bit. a little grayer. Yeah. Every, yeah, where it's like part of me dies, where it's like, oh, there you go. And the other part of the thing, the thing that happens to me is I get very grateful. Like, I'm really grateful, but part of me dies. It's a really weird paradox where I'm like, you know, you're oh. like grateful and dying and thriving all at the same time. Right? Yeah, exactly. But I don't mind it. Like, it's one of those things that, that went because I know I had an effect on people, right? Like, yeah. that's that's what we're supposed to be here for. And I, did I affect people negatively from time to time? Yeah, I got paid pretty well to do it. So absolutely. But go. I also, my, my thing was, if I can't entertain people, if I can't keep people here and listening or shocked or compelled or whatever the situation is, I don't want to do the job. You fast forward to like now. And Kareem and I have these these fantastic conversations about the purpose that we're here for, right? We're literally here to make a difference in our community, which is immediately around us. So advocating for the right thing is super fucking easy for me, which is what's amazing to me about this entire movement, because I thought when I'm like, you know what, Dean 2.0, still entertaining, still wants to take people out of the knees, but only the bad people, only the worst people. Like, that's my goal. But I'm amazed because I thought when I turned over this new perspective and I kind of came into my own and I decided to make some life changes, I thought I'd get, I'd get told to die less on Twitter. But it happens like every fucking day. It's like, yeah, I hope you die. That's you're a you piece of shit. I'm like, work. Yeah, I put out a, a video this morning of a of a dog, a, a dog crossing dog, like a crossing guard dog helping That's kids a great go video. across. The One of the best videos I've ever seen. I'm like, this is beautiful yeah. little puppy helping. Like, to have start your day with this. I get a tweet back from one of the crazies, the unacceptable fringe account. He's like, oh, "Fuck you, you Satan worshiping dickhead." And I'm like, <laughs> uh, "Just it was a dog." This is just dog. So when I when I decided to become a better person, I would assumed I would get less death threats and told to fuck off less. But yeah, it doesn't seem to happen. No, I feel like the better you are, the more you're gonna get that actually. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. And the other thing you get really too, wild. I don't know if you guys get this. 
Karima, you get it all the time. You must. It's like you put something positive or humorously positive out in the world, and you're like, hey, everybody, try to have a great day. Focus on what you should be focusing on. And someone, someone will go, stop telling me what to do. And I'm like, oh, yeah. You're the boss of me. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It's wild. We just there's a lot of really uh, the uh, there there's a lot of really damaged people out there right now. That's yeah. Uh, that's that's and the interesting media thing. It's just like such a toxic cesspool in so many ways. Like the I basically just like block all anonymous accounts. If somebody doesn't yeah. have like a picture or a name and a bunch of numbers, I'm like, I block them. Yeah. Me Actually, too. There was a guy. There was a columnist from the Toronto Sun that emailed me today, wanted an interview, and he was upset. He tried to contact me on Twitter and realized that I blocked him, and I was like, oh. <laughs> you were for the sun, like fuck off. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the same comment I gave to those other people. Fuck off, fuck off. Bud. <laughs> you need to sell t-shirts, Diane. Yeah, yeah. you need you need Would a you mind if... t-shirt. I've had a few people say that. <laughs> yeah, t-shirts. Yeah. T-shirt. Okay, My so here's actually, I had a friend offer to make them. Well, yeah, I've got an it. offer for you. I got an offer for you. Because we're uh we've got a bit of a merch company. Lachlan is the director <laughs> of merch. No, no, it, dude, it's a little serious merch company. We've got our own credit card. It's all good. Cool. Oh, yeah. Um, we'll do your shirts and donate the money to charity. Sounds charity good. of your choice. Because we're doing Karima 316 shirts. Um, and uh, Lachlan's on top of that. But I think fuck off, fuck you, fuck wads. Well, what, let's get this right. Let's get this straight. What are we putting on the shirt? <laughs> fuck off, comma, you fuck wads. <laughs> Love the emoji at the end where you're like, I like the it. lower. I like the you're lower case emoji. too. That's I don't know why lower case. Like, like, yeah, no big deal. It's okay. <laughs> um, but we'll do your shirts for you, and we'll give the money to charity, Mayor Diane, Your Excellency, Your Your that Highness, Your Majesty. <laughs> How many more days are you going to be mayor for? By the way, before we let you go, there's like, <laughs> who has a countdown on their phone? Not I. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Our last, <laughs> no, I literally do. Um, um, our last yeah. is September, so that is 40, uh, 40 days till the end of term. It's a happy phase. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. When are you in Cuba? Yeah. When are you in Cuba, Diane? In November, we haven't yet, we haven't yet but in November, my mom is taking my sister and I, which is going to be super fun. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. need a pool boy? Go to Havana. Do you, do you need two pool boys? Couple old white guys happy to help you out. Carry your there shit. You we'll take off and drink for the day. You can hang yeah. out with your mom. We'll bring Karima. We'll all go down there. We're gonna have a That's team meeting. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, listen, I mean, Diane. I love you're, Cuba. You, yeah, I do too. Um, I, you're awesome, and and I'm really grateful that you 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 could spend a little bit of time with us today. Um, and, and uh, I'm just like like Lachlan, floored by your honesty. Um, yeah little bit angry that you listened to me when you were a kid um <laughs> but i'll get over it yeah same with you karima feel like you've been lying to me for two years but that's okay <laughs> you'll get over it old man thanks buddy i appreciate you'll forget it. About it, <laughs> forget about it that's, <laughs> that's ageist. Never you guys are you guys are ageist the millennials are ageist i'm tired yeah. of it yeah, yeah, it's yeah. True. just put just put pants on, Dean. Stop. <laughs> I haven't worn them in decades. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to thank you both. And what we have here on the right side of the screen, my right side of the screen, are two incredibly impressive women, young women who we need to promote into positions of authority. People who uh, are compasses. They're like the, the load stars for society. And when they speak up, one of the best things you could do. Specifically, I'm talking to you, white guy, guy. Z two S's. I get it. I'm, I'm Give them board. your support. Give them your privilege. There is nothing more important. Nothing more important you could do. Don't keep your privilege. Don't try and protect your privilege. I want you to give it away because when you give it away, you make the world around you a little bit of a better place. You make people who feel marginalized feel a little bit stronger and you give people who really need your help a leg up. And listen, there these women on my right are much smarter than the two guys on this screen and we That's need more smart people to take control of uh, the situation that we have found ourselves in that a bunch of dumb white fucking dudes have screwed up. And we're talking to I'm, you, Barry. Yeah. And Terry and Max and Randy and Pierre and the old guard is there's one thing I know today is that these two people is, and I've known Kareem for quite some time. 
I have so much respect for both of you. I'm more grateful that you're here than you are probably. So thank you very much to both of you. Uh, Karima, sorry. Uh, sorry you're still wrapped up in what we do. I'll try and not be as much of an asshole in 2023, but can't, can't tell you how grateful I am for both of you guys. So thank you very much for spending time with us today. No, thank you. All right. We'll talk to you soon. Uh, Mayor of Peterborough, Diane Terrian. Diane nice and you, Diane. Terrian on Twitter is where you can find her. Thank you, Diane. And of course, we'll at Kramer Rules on Twitter. Yeah, give we'll these young, lovely tweet. ladies a follow. Oh, this is the best tweet I've ever seen in my life. Still the best tweet I've ever seen in my life. Part of it is like, it took courage. Are you dipping into your snacks, by the way, that we've uh, got a couple snacks there? You snacking again? Snacking. Crispers. My daughter, my daughter's home. And uh, we get, my wife buys good snacks when my kids are home. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, so you're happens. happy that you got the snacks. Yeah. I, I, but I, I'm blown away by uh, Diane. I think she's awesome. Just awesome. It it's like, it's like they hide. Getting out. What's that? It's a little sad she's getting out. She's leaving politics. Yeah. Yeah, I'm we, not. I'm not happy need, about that. Take gender out of it. We need more honesty in politics, and and it, it's not for me. Listen, if if you support that group that was trying to arrest the Peterborough police, that's on you. It wasn't about the fact that she stood up against something that was crazy. It's just that that's such a real moment. You don't see real moments from politicians you you don't get that that kind of honesty it's not about the fact that i agree with her that's beside the point it's about that was a moment of frustration she's being told by the people around her that she should make a comment and so she did and she Mm -hmm. didn't sit there and think about what the ramifications of that tweet would be and listen i'm guilty of it and i'm i'm mad at myself all the time i don't respond the way i want to respond anymore because i'm so worried about the world that we live in and i get it i understand it and it's not just politics it it's it's basically it's basically the world now we're so fucking worried about offending people and how people view us and what are they going to think if I say this or, oh my God, I, maybe I should put a filter on this, 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 this picture. Oh, I, oh, I can't come on the podcast today. I got cold sores and stone Stewich who isn't a real person is going to make fun of me, right? Like we have these moments all the time in our lives. It's not just politics and we need to just fucking get over ourselves. Right? We all do it. We all yeah. do it. Dean went on our on the merch page a couple weeks ago and then sent a note to everybody and said, do we have to have fuck on every one of our, our t-shirts? I get it. I get it. And you're dealing with people now that are trying to prop this, this thing that you've built up and, and throw it into a, into the stratosphere to make it even more, you know, palatable and, and more successful. And they're looking at the merch page going, do you have to have fuck on all the t-shirts? We overthink about everything. Mm-hmm. Yet we just promised to to make D- Mayor Diane's T-shirt that has "fuck off you fuck wads." <laughs> Dude, I told you it's just the fuck line. We're just doing the whole fuck line. So if you want something with "fuck" in it, "fuck Pootler," "fuck Doug Ford," uh, "fuck, fuck Doug. you Doug," "fuck you Doug," now "fuck off you fuck wads." Yeah, no, I get it. I get what you're saying. And and getting back to the authenticity part, like these, she's an authentic human being. You know, she's a very, very smart person. Same with Karima, which is why I have this much respect. Like I went through the first 40 years of my life, literally robing, draping myself in my privilege, right? Whether it was mm-hmm. the, the money I made or, you know, the mantle that I had or the, <clears throat> you know, the short term. You were very infamy, successful in life. All that well. stuff. Yeah. All that stuff. And I didn't get it. I just thought it was a smash and grab. Right. Women are wired differently than guys, specifically if you give them power or influence. Women, it seems, most of them, seem to like to give that away. Guys take it and boss everybody around with it on behalf of the people who gave them the privilege or who support them. Women don't seem to do that, right? You talk about authentic people. Mm -hmm. I I can't think 
of a politician other than Nate Erskine Smith. And I mean that. And then Diane, like who Nate. we spoke to yesterday. Nate's a great guy. I can't think of somebody that I would support other than those two people. And I know lots of them. I know lots of them. And, the re and we go back to the well. We talk about the same thing every time. And the reason why is because everybody that is in politics today is in it for one of two reasons, right? They're in it because they're friends with people who told them, we need you to, to go and run in this area. We need you to be yeah. this person for this party so that we can help each other get more shit. So we can help each other get pensions. So we can help each other get free yeah. jobs and free expense accounts and apartments and, and all the shit that comes with being a politician, the taxpayer shit. So a lot of people, I would say the vast majority of people who run for politics are in politics and want to stay in politics. All of those people care about that so much more to the point where they don't even give a fuck about their constituents after year two yeah. or three or four. Like not, they don't care. They care about whatever keeps them in office. Look at Trump. Look at the GOP. Dude, look at the fucking conservative party. of well, Canada. Trump needs to run again to keep himself out of jail. I think yeah. that's a bit of a different angle. But but if, but yeah. again, it goes back to the same thing, right? What's in it for him? And he's holding an entire country hostage because he's scared of going to fucking jail. Right. Yeah. That's what he's well, doing. Well, I, I got to be honest with you. And, and this is just a moment of, of pure honesty from, from your old friend Locker on the Dean Blundell podcast network, the Dean Blundell podcast show. If I had a fucking expense account, I would be just a maniac with that thing. It'd be free booze every night, everybody. <laughs> Every single town council. That's why I was so disappointed. I was so sad pill. for Diane. <laughs> <laughs> if she had an expense account, I was going to get on a plane and fly to Peterborough and help her spend some of it on her last 40 days. We're going out with a bang, girl. Come on. Let's go to the fucking taco place and get some <clears throat> margaritas tonight. It's on you. Woo! On a personal note, I think I'm in love with her, too. That's the other I, thing. I told you at the beginning I didn't want to make it awkward, but I think I'm in love with her. And when you offered to go to Cuba, I was like, that's not an awful idea. Yeah. You know, pool boy, I'll leave her alone. Yeah. yeah. I just, just want to bask in her aura. Well, you'd probably hit on her mom. <laughs> My mom loved you. I get that one all the time, too. People that used to listen to me, they're like, you did not need to say past. that. It's like, my parents loved you. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> that sucks. But I'm grateful. <laughs> I was reminded of that when did you, did you see the announcement today that Zellers is making a comeback in Canada? Did you see that? Why is this? We had did about 40 this? people. At one, one point, Grant says to me, he what goes, Zellers? I said, hey, we're going to talk about, um, you know, I don't know. Cheerios are good for you. <laughs> Great fucking radio bit coming up, ladies and gentlemen. We'll do that after police. <laughs> and uh, and he goes, no, Locke, I think we need to talk about the Zellers thing. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck's with the Zellers thing? And he goes, no, listen, everyone's been texting. And then I open up my social media this morning, and I had like three or four people send me the story. I Listen, I appreciated Zellers too, but since it's been gone, I've been able to get years. on with my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah it wasn't when, when Zellers disappeared, I wasn't like, <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Like I really wasn't. However, I spent a lot of time between it. the ages of zero to seven in Zellers with my mom and my my grandma. Yeah. Like I just everybody you did. Probably you did up. not wear a pair of pants that weren't from Zellers until <laughs> no. you were about fifteen. Yeah, that's right. And if you went yeah. to Zellers, you never told your friends you went to Zellers. It's this like it's an upscale byway, if you ask me. It's what it is. It's like a Target department store. They had these things. You remember Club Z points? They were they had this points thing. There's Zeddy Club Z. That was their Club mascot. Zed, I do. You, you got extra points, so you could buy. Yeah. It's like you know the Air Miles, but for <laughs> shitty stuff at Zellers. So Zellers goes out of business when Target comes to town in Canada. Target fails miserably in Canada. They leave, and Hudson's Bay owns the Zellers brand. So their goal is, which is fascinating. Uh, they're going to be returning next year, digital first model. So you're going to order online. They're also going to have some brick and mortar stuff inside certain Hudson's Bay stores. If you loved Zellers, but here's the thing. I don't care about any of that shit. I'll never buy anything from fucking Hudson's Bay or Zellers. Anyway, this is, I just don't, I just, I'm not a Hudson's, but I don't go into apartment stores to buy stuff. I go to stores that I don't have stuff. Not the point. The only reason I was like, Hmm, interesting. Zellers is coming back. 
Do you remember the Zellers restaurants? Do you remember these bad yes. boys? Yes. This comes up. <laughs> Why was this a thing? Grant and I were trying this, to figure this out this morning. This was we a thing it, because they served. You could smoke in them. You could smoke in there and they served sheer garbage. Like it was, there wasn't a fucking green leaf to be found anywhere. No. And if you wanted vegetables, they looked at you like you had 12 heads. Like yeah. I remember going with my grandmother to a Zeller's restaurant one beautiful morning where she was like, let's go to Zeller's and get more club Z points. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So we go to Zeller's and, and I'm like, can we at least go for the donut poutine? And she's like, sure. They invented shitty food at Zeller's in every Zeller's okay. restaurant and every Sears or Woolco. I'm going way back now with Woolco. They all had these absolutely fucking terrible in-house restaurants, kind of oh, like how shit. Walmart's has a McDonald's. Darren, remember that? What's that? Darren, the fountain peach juice. I, I remember the juice. Remember the ju the fountain yes, juice? Yes. The peach the fountain juice. juice. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. But it is like I was actually floored when I saw they were coming back because nobody actually goes into these places anymore. Like nobody goes clothes shopping at the mall. Nobody goes into department yeah. stores anymore. I know they're trying to bring people back, but yeah. I couldn't fucking believe it. There's bring back Zellers. Well, it went out of business like 10 years ago and no one gave a shit. They're like, let's bring it back. But the reason why they said they were going to is they wanted to cash in on the nostalgia of the Zellers brand. It's there. So they think they might be on to something. Hey, listen, anybody in the comments section, um, what the hell were those? They had a name, but I remember I lived in those windbreakers. Remember the 80 Zellers windbreak? The K-Way? Were they K-Way windbreakers? What, were they K-Way? It might have been a K-Way. K-Way. Yeah, I think it was K-Way. K-Way. Uh, yeah. uh, there was a Zellers one, I think. I'm not sure. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I don't know People why. Are, I just from that. People were talking about what they ate in there. There's one lady named Stacy. She's like, I always got the breaded filet of soul. I'm like, holy <laughs> fuck, they serve fish. <laughs> Stacy, that's that's a risky move. It was yeah, K-Way. Yeah, was the K-Way K-Way yeah. 80s windbreakers. Yeah, do you remember that? It had the ribbon that went right across the thing. The zipper oh. only came up to here. But you could get the full zipper K-Way there, and you can get like 12 of them for 10 bucks. It was like <laughs> unbelievable. You go to Zellers. I need 12 yeah. K-Ways, please. They're like, oh, yeah. going to a bush party, are you? Yep, that's what I'm doing, all right. Going to a yeah, bush yeah. party. Need a $2 Pit party. Note. Remember those? Those are fucking awesome. Those yeah. big parties we used to go to when we were out west. Uh, Wayne Gretzky's in trouble? He's being sued about um, diet gum. Yeah. <laughs> sued for $10 million late weight loss gum. So you yeah. chew on it and you didn't lose weight. That's right. That's right. Why didn't People it work? Mad. Well, because it's gum and it never works. There's no such thing as weight loss gum. Like, how well, fucking dumb do you have to be to do that? I know Wayne loves money, um, but this is fucking wild. That he was didn't all the this. guys that what was that pill that cured everything that uh don and all the hockey guys were whoring all the time oh too? the cbd was, pill yeah yeah he, they got in trouble for that too it was another yeah, bullshit thing this is uh, not an uncommon thing for wayne he's been in trouble a couple of times no there's one that yeah. cures colds too oh, remember that cold effects yeah yeah cold cold effects, cold effects. I think that didn't they get shit for, did it work i think so I okay know. i thought i tried I it a few times were, seemed to work I think people were getting in trouble for that one too. Just oh, probably. A bit, maybe based on what they were claiming it was doing. <clears throat> well, let's get through the claim. Uh, court documents filed in Los Angeles, obtained by People Magazine. Plaintiff Stephen Sparks <laughs> claims he hired Wayne's wife, Janet Gretzky, as a spokesperson for, oh my God, gum. He said it was a natural gum used to manage weight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Should God. This fatty, you're going to lose some weight. Wayne helped to support his wife that his wife was asked to promote uh, allegedly said he lost 35 pounds in six to eight weeks. Thanks to, Oh my God, gum in a statement that was repeated by Janet. According to the filing, the weight loss claim sparked sparks prompted sparks and other investors to provide more funding to the parent company. Boo Chu <laughs> early, early in 2020, Wayne allegedly admitted it was a false. The claim was false in the statement. Wayne said he lost 35 pounds as a result of, Oh my God, gum. Uh, was the motivation for Sparks and other shareholders to invest or reinvest in Buchu, but either providing capital investment and or services, the file reads, Wayne's motivation for misrepresenting the truth was to increase the value of Buchu's stock, which he surreptitiously purposed, purchased under his family name, 
People from magazine reached out to Wayne's agent for comment. That is the end of the story. I'm assuming he did not respond to that. He gets caught in a few of these, eh, old Wayner? Like, if it's not yep. boot you and, oh, my God, gum, it was, do you remember his little gambling thing a few years ago? Remember that with his uh, lovely wife? Janet seems to be in the middle of most of these things. I think uh, they then, have expensive tastes, and I don't know if they're very good with money, I think, is part of the issue. And now without a regular income coming in, I think, um, you know, he was doing the consultant thing for the Oilers there. Kate's had him on the payroll. And I think, he, you know, it was just like once in a while show up and have, you know, make an appearance at one of our lunches and everyone will love you. And I'll give you, I don't know how many, whatever, millions of dollars for, for, to be on the payroll. Yeah. Um, so I, again, I, I don't know much about Wayner. Um, a lot of these guys end up out outside of hockey and, and, you know, or, you know, retired athletes on any level. And I think a lot of them are just bored. Right. And yeah, you know, but Wayne's, Wayne seems to fall into these all the time. And I listen, I'm a Gretzky file. I've got a lot of Gretzky memorabilia. I grew up being a Gretzky fan. I've met Wayne. I've partied with Wayne. I really like Wayne. I think he's a wonderful guy. I don't know him. Like if he walked by me in a mall right now, he'd probably go, yeah, fuck. I've partied with thousands of people. I have no idea who you are. Um, yeah. But I've told the story. Great. And it was like one of the nicest people I've ever met. I've got no issues with Wayne whatsoever. But I don't know who's consulting Wayne when it comes yeah. to some of these these endorsement deals that he's got going on. And he's got a lot of stuff going on, like he does the hockey stuff for TBS. He's doing the MGM sports book. He's a spokesperson for Tylenol. He's, a, you know, he's on the, a bunch of different boards because he's Wayne fucking Gretzky. His numbers retired around the league. He's the best hockey player to ever lace him up. His records will probably, in, by and large, never, ever be broken in, in our time because it's just not possible. Not a lot he's of them. that good. Not Just a few. Maybe Ovechkin might get there with goal scoring. I doubt it. I don't know. I don't However... Like this guy continues to find himself. And and you know what's amazing to me is you never hear from him, right? You never hear from Wayne. You never hear like, you know, him going, oh, that, that never happened. No, I, you know, I got to stand up for this. No, I'm going to stand up for that. He does such an incredible job of skating through all these things. And mm -hmm. I got to wonder if it's hockey culture in this country, maybe by and large, or the fact that he's the fucking Michael Jordan of Wayne Gretzky's. You know what I mean? Like is it yeah. just this weird double? And, and listen, if he uh, his 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 gum thing, like <laughs> claiming that yeah, that that gum helped him lose like fucking thirty pounds in eight weeks, you'd have to be a complete moron to buy that or invest it in any way. I'm an idiot, and I even even I know that you can't chew gum on the way to better health. It's just the dumbest shit I've ever fucking heard in my life. Well, there might be something to it if you're chewing and you're not eating. If all you do is just chew all day. You might lose oh a little God. bit of weight <laughs> because it, it gets the, it gets, when you chew gum, it gets the saliva going, right? So it activates yeah. whatever it is that you're, you know, it tells you your, your brain that you're, you're actually doing something you're, so yeah. maybe that was where it came from. I don't know, dude. And I started thinking about all the different people that endorse bullshit stuff like <laughs> okay, Alex gum. Jones. What's that? Oh my God, gum. Um, but like Alex Jones, he makes like three hundred sixty sixty million dollars a year selling bullshit supplements that don't do absolutely anything for you at all. Yeah. You know, Wayne made a few million selling gum and promised people they'd lose thirty five pounds in sixteen well, weeks. You know, these guys, it, like I said, they I think they get into money trouble. I think a lot of these guys are in over their heads in some things. They lose money in some things. They, they still want to live in that. They yeah. still want to live in that fifty million dollar house in um in los angeles and that's not cheap you know no. janet clearly had a gambling problem so maybe she was burning some cash <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking hilarious when she got caught for gambling with rick tockett it's like fuck and then they asked i remember they asked wayne it was right before the olympics they're like any news on your wife's gambling problem he's like it's all her i don't want to talk about it and i'm like <laughs> ooh, sweet move threw her right under the under the, the team bus he's like fuck get under there get under that bus oh my god but anyway back to the selling of the supplements uh rogan does the same thing and i was watching uh, rogan's he sells all kinds of bullshit it's just it's 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 literally the wellness portion attached to disinformation is a fucking massive industry but i was watching these old clips of rogan the other day because he was going off on did you see the thing where he was like I think Justin Trudeau's Fidel Castro's son. That was like two weeks ago. Did you see that? Did he do that? I've done Tom that. Segura. Yeah. I bring that up all the time. Oh, dude. Because <laughs> he kind of does. It, yeah. he, he, no, no, no. 
He no. kind of does, but he also no. looks like his dad. He doesn't look all the way like Fidel. He doesn't. Have you got Justin receipts? Trudeau doesn't look exactly. I, no, I wasn't there. I in still the room believe when this is was- what I believe. This is I'm on I'm on side with Joe here. You're an idiot. You, had a you have to Trudeau fucking- flag on the back of your Subaru for three months, dude. I know exactly why. <laughs> it you was think a window sticker. Think. It wasn't a flag. <laughs> it was okay. a window sticker. Um, okay, but then I was watching these these clips and uh, show I pictures. Fucking- you that? can't continue on this this line without showing a picture of of young Fidel Castro and and Justin Trudeau. All right. Google it. Google it and throw it up. And you tell me that if this isn't, if this is not some sort of relation. Okay. Yeah, I got it here. This is so fucking stupid that we're talking. This about is this, awesome. Yeah. This no. is this one. I Rogan, believe Rogan just does it because he's uh, trying to feed the base. That's what he's doing. He's feeding all the idiots at the trough. He's like, here's some more shit. Let's put it in the trough. This one's true. This is oh, true. there's an eye. He looks exactly like Fidel. Exactly like <laughs> He's not though. He's not. It's been widely. He doesn't divided. look it's like just, his old man. It's, it's unbelievable how much he looks like Fidel Castro. <laughs> oh fuck, that's the worst. I mean, and we don't listen. We don't need to go down the path, the garden path. Everybody is already there, but we don't. Enough See, they look nothing his... alike. There, they look nothing yeah, alike. Because he's ninety. <laughs> Uh, Paul, the this math the doesn't work out. That's Dude, the, one the one thing everybody thing says that counters fuckers. it. The math doesn't work out. His mom was <laughs> never in Cuba. They wouldn't have known each other. Fuck <laughs> off. They didn't. They did. They were hanging oh, out. His cool mom got around to them. Cuba for sure. I can guarantee you. Yeah. Oh, Maggie, she made it to Cuba for sure. I can guarantee, I can guarantee she made it. Anyway, I was laughing because I was watching an old Joe Rogan thing, and he's making fun of Castro and Trudeau, and it was not with Tom Segura. And I was conflicted because I don't know if you watch a lot of Tom Segura, but... I fucking love him. I love him. I love Bill Burr. I love, him. I love Tom Segura. And you know why I love him? Every time I watch a Tom Segura or Bill Burr special, I'm like, I'm shocked because I feel like I'm at home again. I feel like, oh, this is this is the they're middle. making sense of the world. They're making sense of the things that don't make sense. People don't want you to make people make sense of. They're they're laughing about things that we've been told we're not allowed to laugh about, and they're clearly you know, going into those spaces. They're making fun of gender stereotypes. They're making fun of sexuality. And they're saying, like, fuck, relax, everybody. We're not mean. We're not nasty. But then I started thinking, well, fuck, am I allowed to like Tom Segura because he's attached to Joe Rogan? Like, I really struggle with that, where it's like, and then because Joe is like, listen, Joe does a lot of really weird shit and dumb shit, but he actually does some really good shit too. Like I think some of the yeah. stuff that he does and guests that he's had on the show recently, Ryan holiday, I can point to that. It's a guy that I follow. Uh, he's a stoic popularizer. He's like an expert on Marcus Aurelius and stoicism. He's great. Um, it, and it means a lot to me. So the fact that he was on there and I know why Ryan did it, Ryan did it. Cause Hey, listen, can I get the message out about how to respond to life a little bit better to a massive audience? 44 million people, 45 listen to his podcast. Yeah. But like, I, I almost like, I don't want to tell, tell people and this is like i gotta get out of this this is one of the things i want to stop doing because the rest of the world does it where guilt by association where it's like reputational damage because you like this person who might be attached to that person and nobody likes that person and if you do that means this about you and no one can talk to you anymore do you know what i mean does that make any sense unfortunately we are doing that and it and it's very destructive um and, and again i've struggled i don't know if anybody has seen any of the podcasts where we've talked about joe rogan where i go listen i listened to him for a long time i i, I was a fan I, and it was largely because of the guests he was bringing on and i understood what that podcast was and i was fascinated by the growth and the success of it based on who he was and what it started out as right and um over time and i i have stopped listening to him especially in the last couple of years i've i've really sort of steered away from joe since he's moved to texas i i found it difficult to listen to him every once in a while like grant who still listens to him as well he'll say oh he had so and so on and i'll go and i'll i'll tune it in the problem I have with Joe is not my political stance or his, it's his lack of humility lately. It, it, it seems he had more humility back in the day 
And now when he makes a mistake, instead of saying, you know, instead of just saying, hey, listen, I'm not a doctor, da, 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 and, and brushing it off, now he's doubling down on some stuff. Like, and, and it, it bothered me that he was unable to make fun of him. And his guests now treat him differently than they did back in the day. When that $100 million announcement came out, his the guests started to treat him differently, right? And that, I picked up on that as well. But mm -hmm. you, you touch on something, Dean, that I think we all need to look at, like all of us, to a man, to a woman, right across the board. If you don't like something, if you're if you're not a fan of something in pop culture or anything, it doesn't even matter. Um, just because somebody else likes it, you sh we we shouldn't be throwing that 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 entire group underneath the bus. But we've done that, and we're doing that more and more. Everyone's been in the, the world that we live in. Everyone's been picking sides, and um, and it's funny you bring up the Tom Segura thing because Tom and Joe are good friends. Tom says that he owes Joe his his career. He would still be this comic that flies around that nobody shows up to that's doing mall gigs if it wasn't for Joe Rogan. That's why he pays homage to Joe and does a regular appearance on his show. And I went to Tom's um, set at, in Edmonton here at this great outdoors comic festival that we've had over the last couple of years. Outdoors, really cool. I know comics hate it, but it's very it's awesome. They bring drinks to your table. It's, it's And he is... He is one of the the more important voices that we have out there right now, and and it it's it it is his ability to negotiate topics and have conversations that we can't have, or you shouldn't be able to have. Him and Bill Burr do this better than any other comics. And when you're listening to him, you're going, okay, we can still have that conversation because of how he does it. I can't even do it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've heard anybody as good as Bill Burr and, and Tom Segura. And the yeah, funny but if thing... You, but if you like Tom Segura, right? Like, let's say you're a Rogan fan, <clears throat> which I'm not at all. You don't um, need to be. No, and I, I think his reputation precedes him, and I think the, the irresponsible shit that he does uh, is... De it defines him. I think it ruins everything else that he does. That's my opinion, right? And, and I've had to yeah. listen to a couple of podcasts recently. Um, but I, I'm not a fan of deplatforming anybody. I really am not. Like I, I think that that people should be allowed to make their own terrible decisions. I just think the environment <laughs> that we live in net dedicates it. Like these people should be allowed to ruin their lives. They really should. And mm -hmm. if you're going to take medical advice from the guy from News Radio, who's a UFC commentator in his spare time, that's your business. I don't care. I think it's ridiculous and idiotic and, and irresponsible. Did. And they did. And a lot of people got sick. Some people died. That's up to you. That's your freedom. That's the thing that America was built on. If I want to kill myself with horse paste, I fucking going to do it. Well, go ahead. I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm through that stuff. Doesn't bother me. Put it on a cracker, mix it into a salad. Don't give a fuck. Don't get worms. Go die. Get a IBS. Doesn't matter to me. Bleed rectally for the rest of your life. It's okay. You that you have the freedom to make that decision down there. And I think that that's the really important thing to Joe. However, if I said to a group of my friends, hey, did you listen to the Rogan experience today? They'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. And you'd right? be judged. Yeah. Yep. And if I said to That's them, hey, have you seen the new Tom Segura special today? Some of them will go, why are you listening to that? And I'm like, well, hold it. Because there are some people on this planet that have, as you pointed out very well, and I think it was a fucking great thing to say, the ability to negotiate a conversation that we used to be able to have, right? In a humorous way. And that's free speech, right? Just like it's someone's ability to feel like, like Diane Terrian, the mayor of Peterborough, telling people to fuck off, calling them fuckwads, which they are. Um, that's free speech as well, right? And and I don't think we're in that same with Chappelle. I fucking love Chappelle. I, I, yes. I think a lot of these guys are friends with Rogan and philosophers. He's also friends with Rogan. And it He's gave me pause for him. In the, He's he's a philosopher. Thank you for yep. bringing that up. I, I think he is. I think he is so well spoken and has such an interesting take on the world that we live in um, that I think he is he's a comic 
he's another one, and I would put him up there at the top of the comics that I enjoy as being. Uh, he's, I think he's an important voice. Mm -hmm. Oh, I do right? too. I, and, I think that, it, that even it's being funny able to though. have the conversations is difficult. Like the, the, it's heroic some of the work that these comedians are doing, and and yes. some of these comedians go back to the same principle, which is no, 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 no. People are allowed to have that opinion. Like, and and, and that's what that's why I wanted to talk to you about it today because I'm like, well, hold it. Where are we at with like? being okay with liking people who the left don't like or being okay with liking people who the right don't like, like, where are we at? And it, and it, and again, like an epiphany, I was like, Oh, fuck them. Like there are a bunch of people who are overly quiet, who sit in the middle, who don't say anything, who circumcise their, their freedom of speech because they're afraid of being tagged into or tagged along with certain undesirables, depending on your perspective or worldview. Right. That is the fucking bane of our existence right now. It that is. is one of the biggest yeah. problems that we have is where You're you right. go, wait a second. You're friends with Randy Hillier. I can't be your friend. Right. And I don't no. think that that's accurate. Like, I mean, if you're friends with Randy Hillier, I'm probably not going to have a lot in common with this you. This is that's a other horrible part. example. <laughs> it is. Uh, the Joe the Rogan, example. Tom Segura was a way better example. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I, what do we do? Like, what do we do as yeah, as know, people? Man. And so my theory is this, you know, if, if I've, I've got a mutual friend that's friends with Theo Fleury, right? And this is a decent example. Theo's insane. Like he's Theo's fucked. Yeah. He's super fucked. He's just mega fucked. He's just an idiot. He just wants to watch the world burn because he's pissed off that people don't take him seriously. And he thinks that he believes in QAnon and all the bullshit. And I said to this person, I'm like, how can you be friends with him? Like, I really wanted to know because it, the, the baseline for me is like, I don't respect him at all. So it's impossible for me to take the guy seriously. I could never be friendly with the guy anymore. And I'm like, maybe that's my job. Maybe that's my fault, right? Because do you remember that time prior to the pandemic where you would walk into a room and you could care less who was vaccinated or whose worldview was whose worldview? Remember that? That's mm -hmm. all I think about walking into a room now. That's a problem. I got to fucking deal with that. I really do. Well, that's that's I think that's a good first step, right? And um and also I don't know if I, I think, can. That's the thing. I don't I and, legitimately don't know if I can That's because you're self aware. And and get, that's okay. You you need to go negotiate through that, right? I, I would have a hard time if somebody told me that um, you know, some people that I really, really truly loved in the world were having a party, but they invited Theo Fleury. I I, I would probably and on a even on a personal level, I, I'm bad for this as well, where I have friends that have this ability to separate things like this, and, and I, I'm not there yet. And if they're having a gathering and they tell me and they know how I am, <laughs> so I get warned about certain individuals at certain gatherings, and, and I choose not to go sometimes just based on the fact that I'm still... I'm still dealing with that. I'm still struggling with this this idea that um, that I I so adamantly disagree with you that I can't be in the same room with you. And and mm -hmm. I'm listen. I'm aware of it that it's it's probably on me, right? I brought up a couple of people, um, uh, you know, on on this podcast that I you know that I that that I that run in the circles that I run in, and I. Honestly, I've I, I've blocked them on social media. I can't be in a room with them because I've I'm so offended by their stance in life right now. And it's not even a vaccinated or unvaccinated thing. I mean, we're what talking is it? about yeah, but what is it? Let's break that down because I, I for me I know what it is. I've been thinking about it a lot. But what is it for you? For me, where I draw the line now. Um, because a lot of people are thinking it's politics or it's it's COVID or vaccination or whatever. For me, what I've done is, um, and I'll probably stick to this if I'm being honest, there's just a lot of people where the pandemic was hard on them and they're just, they're so negative and their energy is constantly negative. And so I have a tendency to get sucked into the cynic side of of life the cynical side of life and so i have to watch myself i'm self-aware enough to know that that i can be a little 
too much, a little too negative. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm in a room with a bunch of people that are negative and all they want to talk about is just, you know, negative shit, I will get sucked into that. And I try to avoid that now. Um, so yes, maybe that guy didn't get vaccinated. Yes, maybe that guy got blocked by Facebook because he threatened to kill the prime minister of our country. And that might be part of it. But it's for me, it's about the negativity. I, I yeah. they're just they're, they just suck the life out of the fucking room. And I don't there's too I don't have enough time in my life to yeah. to 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 have that around me. I'm I'm sorry. I'm doing everything I can to 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 be more positive in in my life, right? I'm trying to exercise every day. I'm I I'm I legitimately I'm trying to eat better. You're trying to I'm do trying. you. You don't need to have someone else's them that. in your day. Yeah. Yeah. So you that's where from... I that's where that's where I draw the line. The negativity, like constant yeah. negativity. And we I all know it. people like that. Yeah. Um for me it's it's similar. But it's there's there's two parts to it. One is, and I've arrived at this place now, and I'm comfortable saying it. If you believe in any organized religion, I immediately have a hard time respecting you, specifically evangelical Christianity. I I cannot, I do not think you're bright. I think you're adopting someone else's perspective. I think you militarized all that stuff. And seeing what's happened in this country over the past year, that's number one. This is the most important one, right? To me, it's if you were not collectively part of some kind of community solution in the last two years, and you just advocated for you and what you thought was right for you, I cannot be in the same room as that person. I can't. I can't. If you're not vaccinated and you went through the consternation of the things, and if you did the work and you still didn't want to get vaccinated, you were and you weren't an asshole, I have no problem with you. None. Don't care. I don't care. We have people that we that we work with that are not vaccinated. That's And ask that them was medical, how I treat though. them. That was health yeah, related. That was, that was medical. But we have other people in the company who I have not talked about that just chose to not get vaccinated. And we but talked about it. they didn't make it. a thing out of it. But they didn't join groups and show up to make people's lives miserable and protest yeah. in front of hospitals and prevent people from getting to chemo and standing in front of kids' vaccine clinics going, your parents are going to kill you. You'll never play hockey again. That, to me, was like I turned off the empathy dial for any single person That's that was fair. selfish enough to keep them their own health, their own perspective, and hold that, lord that over their families their relationships and their communities. I fucking had had enough about a year ago. Right. Yeah. So now I'm settled right in. Like I can't, I do not respect you. If you believe in some Fugazi religion that says you got to treat people like shit, you got to go and take over a city. You got to preach the good word and the hate of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, you're fucking dead to me. The other thing is if you chose yourself over the greater good, you're also dead to me. So I, that's my issue. Like that's where mm. I need to come back from. Right. Because it circumcises all of our lives. And, and I'm telling you right now, I don't have the, the testicular fortitude or the intestinal fortitude to do that. I don't have my way of thinking out of this box right now. Like I really don't. And it's not that I'm scared of any of these twats. Cause I could give two fucks. Like Tom Marazzo still shit posting me. It's like, dude, I don't give a shit. I could care less about any of those people. Yeah. I think these people are speed bumps for everyone else that tried to get on with it, keep their parents safe, keep their yeah. confirmed family members safe, keep themselves in good working order, trying to get through all the lockdowns we all had to go through, trying to schedule appointments we all were trying to schedule, trying to stay afloat, trying to keep your jobs, trying to get a job. Like mm -hmm. there was so much that was so much more important that none of those people gave a fuck about because it was all about them. So, I've written them off. I've got family members that I'm like, I can't even fucking look at them. Like yeah. I cannot look at some of my family members because it's like, who are you? Where did you go? And, and, and how are you so much more affected by everything everybody yeah. went through than anyone else? And I arrive at selfishness and I fucking can't be around that because we weren't created to be the best just for me. We were created to be the best for the people around us. That's the only way we work.
good yeah. character acts for the common good. That is it. And when I see people that do the exact opposite, Jordan Peterson, that's why he triggers me as much as he does, because it is he puts himself at the center of every fucking stupid little grievance and story that he chooses to air on Twitter or some fucking Fugazi YouTube video about big words and stupidity and Jesus and Orthodox Russian Christianity. Yeah. It's like, holy yeah. fuck, you stupid idiots. Get the net. This is not about you. There is no afterlife. You're all going to be buried in the dirt like I am by the end of it. So what are we doing here? And if you you didn't have the foresight over the past two years to think about other people first, once, I, I want nothing to do with you. Like mm -hmm. nothing. And I need to get over that because, again, it causes me some significant issues in my life. And the other side, they don't feel the same way. They're just waiting for us to come to our senses, 90% of the country. That's why I know they're so fucking stupid. I mean, that and a million other things, like trying to arrest the entire police force in Peterborough this weekend. You fucking yeah. kidding me right now? Anyway. Something I got to well, deal with. It, and the Tom I, Segura I, thing was just a good thing because I looked at Tom and I'm like, I really like Tom. And I looked at Joe and I'm like, I have no respect for Joe because of the selfishness and what he's doing. And I'm yeah. like, eh, I don't know if I can do it. But I still like Tom Segura. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's interesting. Tom shows up on Joe's podcast and you're concerned about telling people that you listen to that or that you're a Tom Segura fan, right? because of the relationship with, with Joe. But if Dave Chappelle showed up tomorrow, some people have this ability that, that that's, that's the interesting part of this conversation for me is that some people have this ability to sort of negotiate life and it, and, and get through things unscathed regardless of their, and I think we can learn from them. And I think that's why Dave Chappelle is such an important voice right now. The, the only thing that I can say to you, Dean, about where you're at is I think it's the one thing about you that I've learned is you are very self-aware. Um, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses. And the nice thing about you as well is that you're willing to actually put them out on display for the most part. Although we still have not really, really jumped into this face cream thing. I I don't know if I'm ready for that just yet, but um, we'll get there. Um, you you have this ability to um to 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 look at yourself from an objective point of view and, and and what you're going through right now is not it's not a microcosm it, it you know what i mean like it, everyone in the country is still kind of going through this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and i think i think it's okay for you right now to to separate yourself from that energy to keep yourself safe until you figure out how to move forward with it, right? I don't know if I will. That's the thing. And, and that's okay. With, you, with one of my relatives. And they're like, what do you think about this person in our family? I'm like, I don't think I can do it. Like, nah, I, I just don't. Okay. I, I don't think I have the... Because uh, you, you know when you're going to snap? Like, you know when you walk into a situation? You're like me. You're, you're hair trigger. And you're like, I don't want to go into that room. I don't want to go to that situation. I don't want to go into that place. Cause I know that that person's in there and my entire angry intention and just be fucking focused on that person yeah. because I cannot stand yeah. what they have done over the past year. And that's where I'm at. Like to the point where I don't get triggered by anything, but when it comes to family and people that I used to know and love and trust and to watch how they've treated everybody else over the past two years, I'm like, nah, man, can't do it. I can't have that toxicity in my life. I can't have that conversation with you because one of two things is going to happen. Well, only one thing's going to happen. We're not going to be even remotely like in, interested in talking to each other. If you open your mouth up once about any of that stuff, like yeah. not even remotely because I will sabotage the whole thing. Like I know me, burn it down. right? I know I would fucking burn the guy down or the girl down to the point where I was at a poker party a couple weeks ago. One of the guys was like beaking off about how many jabs you get, how many jabs you get. <laughs> you haven't even gotten it yet. And I've known this guy for like 20 years. And I turned and looked at him and it was like an hour into it with his like constant jabbing, like making fun of guys. And one of the guys was an older dude wearing a mask. He's been playing with us for years, making fun of his mask. And I said, dude, why don't you just shut the fuck up? Yeah. Like, why don't you just pick your chips up? I'll give you your fucking buy in. Just leave. Like, no one is interested in this here today. None of the people who are vaccinated wanted to talk about it. 
he was the only guy who wasn't vaccinated. He wanted yeah. to talk about it all night from a perch perspective, from like an I'm better than you yeah. perspective. That dude's a beta male and he's never invited back to poker again. And you know what his thing was when he sent a big email to everybody? He's like, clearly, I know where you guys stand when it comes to doing the right thing. One day you'll all wake up. And I'm like, or you were just a huge cock at poker and you're not allowed to come back. <laughs> it's pretty simple, right? There's that. And everybody's sick of your shit and all the dumb rallies you go to. Like everybody's tired of your crap, dude. And I sent that back to him and he's like, that's not the case at all. And oh, you should have replied all. Oh, oh, dude. And everybody else chimed in. I did. That's fucking the first thing I Good did. For the you. only time I Good reply all is when I'm going to sewer somebody and I want everybody else to see it. Here we go, everybody. Hang on to your fucking hats. And so everybody in the poker group started to chime in. They're like, no, nah, dude, you're fucking way off. Nobody had a good time until you left. And he's like, well, I know who my real friends are. I'm like, dude, you abandoned your real friends over the past two years by deciding yeah. to be a selfish cock, right? Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, he'll hang it on the vaccine and your differences between what happened in the last two years, which which is which is sad. I, I got a story that precedes the pandemic. Um, I used to get uh, regular updates from my uncle. I've only ever been in the in the same room with my uncle because he's he's uh, he's not well. He's a he's a sick man mentally. Um, I've only ever been in the same room with him a couple of times in my life. Um, he's, it's my mom's brother. And, um, for some reason, five, maybe even longer, 10, 10 years ago, he got my email address somehow. And so he started including me on his annual Christmas letter, which was a come to Jesus and blah, blah, blah. And you're all going to hell. And, and this is what the season means. And if you don't do this, you're, you know, you're an idiot. Blah, 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 blah. And I remember the first couple of years, I just ignored it. And then there was a year for whatever reason, I felt obliged to to comment and there was a ton of people on this mailing list and he didn't hide anybody either it wasn't like he blind cc'd us all he put us all right in the cc so there was like 40 plus people and most of them i didn't even know a few family members that i'm that i'm not in touch with but i i wrote i sat down with a with a couple of beers one night and i wrote my thoughts on christmas and family and being a good person and i fired it off I have never heard from him since. Um, and I heard from everybody on that fucking list. And it was all of them were like, thank God you said this. <laughs> you know, um, the thing about it is, is you're going to have these relationships in your life. And I understand your I think you're you're having some guilt because maybe you've lost some friendships. They're gonna it's gonna come and go. Um because of things like this. The pandemic maybe just escalated a few of those relationships. It did for me. I've lost a couple of friends that like there's people I will never talk to based on how they went through the last couple of years. And you know mm -hmm. what? And here's the thing, Dean. I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I, I am. I, 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 the, a couple of them bothered me because of how I dealt with it. Yeah. Because I didn't deal with it as well as I think I should have. Did you snap? But I'm over it. We don't need to get into details, <laughs> but I've moved on. Yeah. Like I said, you guys were surprised at my ability to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> It's shocking, actually, how many <laughs> fights like you a... get into with people and how fast like you can still fall asleep because it would eat oh, me up at night. No, nah, yeah, I'm kidding. No, I, I don't have a soul either, so I'm good. I, I am very good at getting over conflict. Yeah. It's actually well, a gift. Because like, if you ask me what the biggest, the biggest fallout from all this is going to be, it's that, right? It's the interpersonal shit where... You grew up with certain people. You have family members who you loved up until the last two years who you can't even fucking stomach now. Like, yeah. you can't even look at them. I, I know that that's how I am. You know, and there's certain text groups that I'm involved in that I've just removed myself from. And some of the people in those text groups I really like. You know, I, I and, and, and it's me. It's me doing it. You know how you're preventative, you're proactive because you don't want people to be around that Lachlan? I yeah. know what I'm like. 
and I'm preventative and I'm just removed myself from certain situations and gone head first into better ones. You know, like that's, it's not about the loss either for me. It's about, okay, well, listen, this is like pruning time when it comes to friend groups, right? It's kind of looked at it that way. That's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I don't want to stay angry at those people for a long period of time. So I'm just working on letting it go and not giving a fuck. It's not about, you know, curating new relationships with old assholes. It's about, mm, I'm thinking I'm good. I'm going to prune those relationships. You know, when I see him, I'll wave, not going to interact, won't be going to dinner, any dinner parties, won't be going golfing with certain people anymore. But I've got like an entire section of friends who are normal, who want the best for each other, who don't care about our backgrounds, don't care about what we've done. Everybody in that group, I'm totally cool to hang out with. Right. Totally cool. Mm -hmm. And I'm a very busy person. Very. Uh, my social calendar's busy. I, I don't feel like I'm losing out, not being friends with certain people. The mm -hmm. family stuff's a little bit of an issue, but I've let that go, too, because I'm like, ah, fuck, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. Like these people are going to continue to be these people. Um, but it's going to be the biggest thing that we have to get over. We're going to have to massage over the, the next four years like this. The damage that vaccines and pro this or anti that have done to Canadians hasn't been a national problem. It's been a fucking national disaster. Yeah. Because interpersonally, right. there are so many people like us who sat in this confused box for a couple of years going, I don't like this. Like, I don't like any of those people. I don't like what they're doing. And I've literally had to refine this in my head for two solid years. Why is it? I hate them so much. And it came down to this. You're selfish. You're too dumb to believe in objective reality. So that's why you adopt a religion. And I can't fucking hang out with those people. They're just like yeah. clowns to me now. Just clowns, yeah. sad fucking clowns. Most of them from Alberta too. Yeah, no, no, that's not true. No. Look, we just had the mayor of Peterborough on. Yeah, I know. We're a, uh, we're a collection of them just showed up trying to arrest the police department. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in love, by the way. Your province to to is run Cuba by Doug Ford. <laughs> I know, I know. We I love how you guys just fucking skate through life ignoring that. Fuck you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> we we got the biggest redneck asshole conservative neocrat on the planet yeah. running this province, and I'm going, and you what guys about Alberta? shit on Alberta at least <laughs> once a podcast. And your uh, leader fun. is Doug Ford. I know. It sucks. Anyway, Let's thanks for doing up. this, buddy. Appreciate you being here. That was a good one. Thank you. Listen, That's fun. Um, at this point, you and I are still friends. That may come to an end at some point. <laughs> I don't think so. I may, I may wear my welcome out. No, I don't. But think I will I, understand it. If you no. start avoiding me at dinner parties, I will no. get it. No, you listen. Our politics <laughs> are fucking yin and yang. Because I don't have yes. any, and you hate Trudeau, and you got a fuck Trudeau sticker, and I think that's crazy. Uh, yeah, that's, and you're probably going to vote. I took the server. window sticker off. I'm, I'm good for you. No, but, I'm voting Green Party. I'm giving up on all fucking. I'm just I'm voting boy. for a party that actually is going to help the planet. Okay, good. That's yeah. what we'll do too. But we we're very different. But here's why we're we'll always be friends. This okay, is why, why we'll always be friends. Okay, we're the same kind of asshole. Exactly. Actually, that's you know what you're right. We uh, yeah. we definitely are on the cock meter. We're like yeah, like a solid eight and a half. <laughs> oh, can I tell you a quick story before I leave? It's not quick, I, but go ahead. Yeah, go I ahead. don't know how to deal with this. So everyone knows about the in Edmonton. If you listen to the to the show, we caught we talk about the the Edmonton Glory Hole tours all the time. Yeah, I don't want to get into it, but we have merch and it's a constant reference on the show um and the curator of the tours is our little buddy james p white he happens yeah. to be pretty tall he's like right at dick level which we find wildly entertaining talk height he's like oscar pistorius yes. talk height yes and he every time we bring up the fact that he runs this company edmonton glory hole tours i've actually i went to GoDaddy and i actually bought the domain name edmonton glory hole tours.com i own it i paid just paid another $29 to keep it for another year. I own the domain name for Edmund or Tabor glory hole tours as well. Cause I thought that needed to happen. Um, I'm paying money out of my own pocket to keep these web pages yeah. alive. This is and why we'll always be friends. Cause I find this to be awesome. 
Okay, it's a total waste of money, and all you want to do is make the world a more perverted place. It's the fucking best. Go ahead. So, so anyway, if you go to EdmontonGloryHoleTours.com, you'll get taken to a Facebook page because that's where I've directed it to. We didn't build a web page; we just we built a Facebook page, and occasionally we'll get messages. And uh, Grant's really good at responding to them, right? Like he'll have he'll have something funny to say. Uh, for the most part, we don't get to it as much as we should because it's not actually a thing. But there's so many people that go to it that think it's a thing and they want to, hey, is anybody available to talk to? When's the next tour? Like we get shit like that all the time. Well, today somebody sent us a dick pic and I don't know what to do with it, but there's something like a raging dick pic too. I'm looking at it right now. I think he's wearing a cock ring. Uh <laughs> Because I he he so asked someone me a emailed question you a, in an, someone email hang on someone emailed you an inquiry to info at edmontongloryholdtours.com and sent you a picture of their dick and asked you a question. Well, they asked a couple of questions and I just responded casually, like, you know, we're, we're open at three and like just made up shit, right? And then all of a we're sudden I just get a three. rager. Like full on hard, or was it semi flaccid? Well, if it I fluff? show it to you, yeah, we'll get taken down. You'll get taken down. Just, what if I, I just I, do I, a? What if I do a quick camera no. shot, like all the way across? Yeah, that's a, that's a wiener. <laughs> Look, it's like actually a, a pretty impressive one. one too. Yeah. It's all about angles, everybody. Yeah, it sure is. But I was dying laughing because I got up from my nap and I, I was just checking my social media before coming down here and jumping on the pod. And all of a sudden I checked my thing. It's just a huge rager. <laughs> See, most guys would be pissed off about that. I've guys never like been subjected like, to a dick pic before. Right? I'm well, like, now you know how every woman on the internet feels. Right, I'm like you, go, you wake up from a happy nap. You're all excited to get on with your day. You open up your email. It's a picture of some guy's cock. That's how every woman on the internet feels. You just got womaned. That's what you just did. You got female. This is one exchange, and this was a response from Grant. I can't take credit for it. How does the Glory Hole uh, tour work? We meet at 10 a.m. every Saturday and Sunday morning at Times Square Triple X on Stony Plain. There's actually a Glory Hole there. For the start of the walking tour, bring a bottle of water and a good pair of shoes. We'll be we'll be going to six of the most popular glory holes in Edmonton, and we get a lot of people visiting this webpage. And some of the comments are legit. Like, where does this start? How do I get involved? You know, what does it cost? Doesn't that concern you that you've got you've got like a large number of people like inquiring as to how they can get on the bus to go on a glory hole tour in Edmonton to me. get their dick sucked? It doesn't, doesn't bother you at all? me at all. That's why I just paid another $29 to have that domain stay active <laughs> for another year. It's the best. I would, just, I would just slowly send all those over to the police. I'd be like, here's another one. Here's a, it's like a great fucking dragnet. Here you go. Here's probably another pervert. Listen, <laughs> everyone has their kinks. Yeah. This guy Glory wanted holes. to send me a picture of his rager. Dude, I... I would you seriously be able to, if you, in a moment, not in a million years, let me get through it in a moment. Let's say you're at, I don't know, Spearmint Rhino in Vegas. No. And they're like, I couldn't do it. Hear me out. And they're like, we have a glory hole room, Mr. Cross. Yeah. It's $300. Well, first of all, you'd never, let's just make it 10 bucks. <laughs> let's just say it's 10 bucks. Cause you'd never spend. I would never. I spent a half an hour sport. looking for a dime that fell underneath my seat the other day in my car. I'm okay, not so giving anybody say, three hundred dollars. Let's to get say my it's dick five sucked. bucks. Let's go back to five bucks. It's five, five bucks. bucks. That's a way and, better and idea. And they're like, they're like, here's Tanya. Have a look at her. She's gorgeous. Uh, she's going to be behind glory hole number one. A Finsky gets you in. Would you be able to do it? No, I, 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 I wouldn't. I, be I able couldn't to. either. Even if There's it was no free. Way. It's you know what it's a, it's the same kind of mental block I have with jumping in an ocean. It's like yeah. I don't know what's under there. I could it might some. I could jump in an ocean, but I couldn't stick my dick in a hole because no, I know how the world works for a locker. Locker doesn't get the the exciting thing at the other end. Lock gets something horrible at the end of that hole. Like the, on the other side of that hole, like braces. It's it's somebody I went to high school with or something, 
or, you know what I mean? Like it, it's just, it's never going to end well for me. <laughs> All right. It's monkey pox. <laughs> That's the thing. Nobody talks about monkeypox, eh? That's another thing. My Nobody. doctor said to me, um, I told you I went to the doctor yesterday. Yeah. He swabbed my throat, stuck the Q-tip in a thing, snapped it off, put the lid on, and he put the thing down, and he goes, okay, we'll send that to lab. If you have strep throat, um, I will uh, be in touch with you within two or three days. And he goes, I'll also test it for monkeypox. And I went, what? And he goes, oh, no, I'm, I'm messing with you. I went, oh, <laughs> I'm like, good, good one, doc. Well, you know, it's so <laughs> no one jokes about it either. Like your doctor, thank my God doctor, doctor joked about it with me. Well, it's homophobic. Oh, is it? Okay, I, I asked. I asked people whether we could make fun of the the, the monkey pox because it's a funny name for a disease, isn't it? It's my favorite disease name of 2022, yes. and we've had a few. Yeah, we've. Had I didn't a few. mind that the doctor made fun of it. For me, it didn't bother no. me. I was okay with it. I laughed. I laughed out loud. It was. Yeah, we're gonna have Doctor Fishman on hopefully next week to talk about it. But he had a great tweet. Can we talk about his notice. last name? Doctor Fishman. Oh, I thought you said Fishman. Awesome. No, Fishman, <laughs> not Fishman. No. no, he's the best. He's such a funny guy too. He's great okay. and he's super All cool. Right. Um, but like he put out a tweet and he literally he's like. Okay, everybody, here's the kind of deal with monkeypox. Some of you aren't going to like it. And the tweet was like, just so you know, 99.4%, I'm paraphrasing, of people who get this are men who have sex with other men. It's definitely a disease that impacts that community. It doesn't sure. necessarily mean that uh, we can't make fun of it, though, right? No? Right. I think we can. I think it's... A, I, I don't, think I if, won't be. If, if I was gay, I would still make fun of monkeypox because it's a funny name. I'm not Wouldn't doing you? it. Wouldn't you? No. Okay. No, not right. at all. I'm staying as far away. I just had away. a doctor make fun of it. Well, I know that, but it wasn't on a podcast <laughs> with tens of thousands of downloads a week <laughs> and thousands of viewers and It's unfortunate of that of it is such a funny name for a disease well, it and is, that there is the stigma. It, well, there's a stigma because it it's yeah. very, 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 very prevalent in that community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's not new. It's been around for a long time. It is hideodorous when you get it too, especially if you get it. You know, I've seen some pictures. Region. Yeah, hideodorous. The uh, but you the, can't. The stores are fucking oh, massive. awful. They yeah, get Katie huge. Home size stores. You got Lachlan size heaters, but like all over the face. Um, and, but you can't joke about it. Like it's because it's all like right. it's terrible. Okay, I'll stop. But my that I'm going was back my to thing, see that doctor that, to tell him I'm offended. <laughs> you should, yeah. Say I'm woke. Woke Lachlan's back. I'm offended that you joked around about the monkey box. But I'm shocked that he did. Like that's fucking unbelievable. I was because, too, because well, I, like I even said I even said I even said on the air, I said, yeah. Hey, are we allowed to make fun of monkey pox? No. And uh I had it was a mixed bag. I, I said, listen, I I will avoid making fun of monkey pox. I love the name. I would like to be able to make fun of monkey pox. But if you guys are telling me no, no. and it was literally, a, I got 100 texts, boom, and it was 50-50. Yeah, you can. Go nuts. And then the other faff were like, ah, stay away from it. Probably not a good idea. Yes. So we just Listen to your friend Dean. Don't do monkey pox jokes, like ever. All right. that, that's like the curse of death right now for a lot of people. Just a quick heads up. Don't do the monkey yeah. pox jokes. No, I won't. Yeah. All right. Tell your doctor, too. I'm going back right away. Blue jacket guy is like he tweets good. No lock. No, just, just no. Still. <laughs> you know that happens a lot, Paul. I I hear that a lot. Ah, uh, we're trying to figure it out. That's why I brought it up. Anyway, I'm done now. I'm good. Thanks for doing this. All dude. right. Yeah, that was a good one today. Thanks, yeah. man. I, I'm we'll so glad one. that you got Diane on. She, she yeah, was, me too. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. We'll see you tomorrow, brother. Oh, yeah. I, and on the show tomorrow, we'll be talking about Cheerios. I just want to make sure everybody knows the locker room is going to be covering the fucking hard hitting news. You, speaking of hard hitting news, do you know who we have on tomorrow? Who? Other than you talking about Cheerios, <laughs> Obama's former Secret Service agent, podcaster in our network from the Silver oh. Spear podcast, John Guanieri. I love him. Okay. He's fucking that, awesome. No, I'm definitely coming back. Yeah. See you tomorrow, brother. So we're going to talk about Trump and we're going to talk about Secret Service deletions of texts, all that other stuff. It's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Then on Friday, speaking of hard hitting news, 
real Andy Lee will be back with Max Fawcett. Max Fawcett from the National Observer. Andy Lee from the Andy Lee Show. Talking about convoy crap. But we were supposed to do it last week. Andy had an impromptu court date. She's back tomorrow. Sorry, Friday. And I promised her, just so everybody knows. I'm going to do my very best not to shit post her. I'm going to do my very best not to uh, be accountable in tweets. And when I say accountable, I mean like, you know, saying, no, that's not true. You're lying, that kind of stuff. I'm just going to do the interview. We're going to try and be nice. It'll be fun. So there you go. John Guarnieri, former Secret Service agent. Tomorrow, Friday, Max Fawcett, Andy Lee. Thanks for doing this, everybody. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow uh, right here on the program. Don't forget, thanks to our sponsors at Kivlaw.ca. If you're looking for a defense attorney, you done something you shouldn't have done. You in a pinch, a bit of a legal pinch, and you let it slide, and you're like, oh, I should get a lawyer, but I don't know who to call because lawyers are this, or, you know, I'm, I've been lazy, or I don't know how it's going to go, and, and, or I haven't done this, and I need legal representation from someone who's actually going to give a shit about me and my human rights, my legal human rights. Robert at Kivla.ca. If you're in Southern Ontario, you need a good defense lawyer. He is not only one of the best in the country, he's also one of the only human beings I trust that has a law license legitimately. So make sure you do yourself a favor. Call our friends over at Kivla.ca. Go to Kivla.ca today. If you've got a problem and you want to deal with legally uh, or just email Robert at Kivla.ca. He's the man. Thanks to our friends at EdsFineImports.com. His gets are the best Canadian made underwear, boxer briefs. They're the best. I, like, I can't tell you enough, and I'm an underwear guy. You, when you find your pair, when you find your gitch, when you find your brand, you stick with it. These guys redefine the underwear game. Pouch in the front, boxer briefs, Canadians that make underwear for Canadians. We have a little extra something, something in there. Ed knows that, so he made appropriate underwear. Fellas, do yourself a favor. It's like a push-up bra for your junk. EdsFineImports.com, and I'm not lying. G-I-T-C-H-3 is your promo code. He's got a huge online store. Clothing for men and boys. John Varvredos, 34 Heritage Jeans. Blazers, suits, shoes, socks. Massive online store. Check him out today. Use promo code GITCH3. He'll send you a free pair of underwear when you buy three or more. And you will buy the underwear. Oh, you will. And our friends at EasyAutoFinancial.ca. They've been helping people get in cars, get financing for vehicles. Very difficult to do it. Everybody wants to make you pay for it. Nickel, dime, nickel, dime. They don't nickel and dime. They don't do any of that stuff. They make sure that you, you get the financing you need and you don't have to pay for it. Super simple stuff. Easy auto financial. Doesn't require any obligation. You don't need to do anything. They take care of everything. All credit welcome. EasyAutoFinancial.ca. Check them out today. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks to everybody for taking part in the show. Thank you if you're in the comment section. Sorry we can't get to single every single person. We try to get to a bunch of you, and we just can't. Sorry, but we love you. Super grateful that you're here. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye.